That, that's Adam unfortunate. Bosworth. I think the commander got bugged because some people from the stream are saying that they're experiencing different mobs now. Like, went from to giants to like these big legendary lords of something and. Uh, wow, we got screwed. Holy that's that's okay, it. Okay, I'm gonna crash this uh, thing. Is what crash I this know. server. So, let's go. Going? Uh, okay, freelancer, right, just tell guys, me when we can do it. Guys, let's head to Snow Lord's Gate, the waypoint, Hornclaw waypoint. There's gonna be more people there. Do what? Where, where is that? Back to the beginning. The beginning, the very end area. There's a bunch of people here already. Yeah. Alright, I'm okay. there. Yes. My game crashed. <laughs> We should right. start on top of the waypoint, I think. Mister, let's do the first one. Let's go. Yeah, start on top of the waypoint. Right on top of the waypoint. That's your entrance. The three this boys. is gonna be so wrong. Remember, you have to walk into it. Remember, you have to yeah, walk into it. Yeah, right next to it. You guys have to walk into it. Oh, yeah, ready? I lost walk it. I lost it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is sick looking. Well, sad. There's like five different lines. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what? There are. <laughs> Where are you guys? Oh my god. god. Holy crap. What's this? This is sick. <laughs> is I love that it. trick. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, <thank> you. <laughs> You're making the entire server lag. Do it a little bit farther away. So they have to load more NPCs. This is way beyond six seconds. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, this is six like seconds. I think that's it. Just oh my god. I think it's crazy. I think, it's I think, you, might it's have it. yeah, I think you actually killed it. I think you actually killed it. Through it yeah, you just killed it. Free, the, reason, no, the no, real no, reason why it's taking so long is because it's making the server lag. Alright, let's do it further away. We can do it again. Let's do it again. Further away. Alright, we can do it two more times. Quick, quick, we gotta do it over and over. Wait, do you have to walk it? Okay, I place my entrance. You have to walk onto it. Please. Mister over here, three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be on it, you have to walk into it afterwards. <laughs> Free, do oh. it further away next time. Oh, I wonder if he'll teleport me back and forth while doing slash sleep. Stop being dicks. <laughs> I don't even see myself move. Yeah. Because it's going Same. so freaking fast. I like see my name on the other side. <laughs> I know, I saw that. Apparently, <laughs> Almost apparently six Roland now. Damon does not approve. <laughs> Sorry, Roland. I know, <laughs> I, I, I know that guy. Oh, wait. Guys, I've lagged Guys, so much that I'm outside of the fast. portal watching oh, myself cool. port. <laughs> <laughs> Having a uh, like out of body <laughs> experience. How meta is that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll do it's, it's, just it's, one. it's back up. Get up. Try to get out and place another one. <laughs> I can't get out. Get out. Oh, yeah. Get out. <laughs> I think we're we playing the server so much. You didn't kill it. Like, Step it again. Oh, My server's there. still bugged. I think you actually broke it for good, dude. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's not going down. Yes. I'm out of strength. I can't. No, no, don't try it. Look, there's Seriously, everybody else is going back and forth still, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Be sure to show this as an I epic bug report to, uh, to um, ArenaNet. Send this oh, YouTube yes. video I to I can them. see guild chat. Oh, it's midnight. I have no guild chat. chat. Like, I'm watching Ogus oh, Famous 6. Gone. He's trying so hard to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chat server must be uh, on a different thing for guild chat. Local doesn't work, but guild chat works. Well, it's 12. So, you guys broke local chat? We broke local chat. Well, we broke the whole zone. You can't do anything. Try to catch the My screen is still oh, blue. I, uh, team chat still works. <laughs> I'm just gonna start chatting. Oh, city wow. Now. Try opening the map. My screen oh. is frozen. I'm going fine. I'm still whipping back and forth. I really wish right. I had him. Oh, 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 there it goes.
Welcome one, welcome all this week on Tales of Tyria. Everything! Ah! We've got everything! Stay tuned, it's coming right up. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's kick it off. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bridger. You can know me as the host of Tales of Tyria. This here is the Guild Wars 2 podcast you should be paying attention to. Talesoftyria.com is the website. You can find our videos. Bridger, it's not showing. It's not showing. It is showing. <laughs> I switched it. It just took a while. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, we have uh, that, by the way, is Freelancer, our uh, illustrious co-host here. Welcome, sir. How's it going, Bridger? A moment ago, I asked him, hey, did you, did, do you want to participate in the PvE discussion? Because, you know, I'm a diplomatic person. Oh, I don't just to want to up, assume, huh? I don't just want to assume that he doesn't want it, to, that he didn't play it at all. And he just looks at me with this disdainful, <laughs> get away from me, you filthy casual, look on his face. <laughs> and introducing our filthy casual for today, Vega. Welcome, sir. Hello. I just realized my camera quality just dropped for some reason. <laughs> it, it tanked for some reason. <laughs> it's terrible. From one phase to another, it froze for a bit, and then it looked like it was working, but I'll, I'll reconnect it up here. Uh, so we should be back. There we go. All right, so introducing also, Kai, we haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Welcome back. Hi, good to be back. All right, so this is a amazing day. Let's just, just jump right into it. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. I do want to mention um, there, let me see, I've got some feedback that I put in here before this whole thing. What does this have to do with anything? I don't know, I some feedback. Aha! So last week we were talking about uh, people, uh, somebody asked us an email and said, hey, what happens if uh, you've got a friend on your team who's just really bad at PvP? How do you tell them that they're bad? You know, they're having a ton of fun, but they're really bringing your team down. How do you broach that discussion? And somebody pointed out, well, I don't see what you would be angry about someone being bad on your team when you're judged individually, unless there's, of course, some kind of a bonus for winning. And of course, we talked also last week about how the glory system does not count victory into it. It only bases it on your personal achievements within each PvP match. So if you manage to get a lot of kills, if you manage to cap a lot of points, that will give you your own personal glory. And that actually kind of got me thinking. One of the problems that we have in League of Legends style games, where you can directly affect how your opponents, uh, how, how your teammates do in the rankings and directly affect how hard the game is for them is you see a lot of people get pissed off at bad players. Whereas in this game, a bad player, even if he brings your team down, isn't as nearly as much of a problem to you personally since your own glory is the only thing that matters. Thoughts? I just thought that was an interesting sort of look at he, it. He has a point there, but think about it. If, if, I'm on a, if I'm playing a class that focuses on giving everybody boons, right? You know, and around me, or AoEs that are supposed to benefit. Let's say Mesmer, Chaos Storm, all right? I love the staff. Um, if I throw that Chaos Storm down on top of my buddies and they get random bonuses of might and, and haste and they're running around faster, bad players will have no idea what to do with that, you know? Whereas if you have the decent players on your team, they're going to say, oh, I moved twice as fast, so now I could be more mobile and do this differently. So it, bad players still affect you because what you're saying by that comment is that if you have a bad player in your team, it's not a big deal because you're judged individually. Just You're telling everybody, play for yourself. Don't care about anybody else. And that's kind of counterintuitive. Well, I think it's more so that it's not as big of a deal I mean, it's still, obviously, you don't want people, like, ruining your victory, but it's not as detrimental as a game like, like Dota or League of Legends, where if you're down that one person, you're going to lose, and it's going to ruin everything else. At least the fact that your performance is based individually, yeah, it still sucks that that guy's dragging the team down, but at least it's not going to ruin your day completely. That's kind of the way I look at yeah, it. Yeah, and, and I understand 
freelancer's point of view entirely, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that we switch over, you know, that it's necessarily a good thing the way that they're doing the glory thing. I mean, we discussed that to death last week, but uh, I just thought that this was one sort of interesting, advantageous way to look at it in, in so far as how it creates a better community to some degree, at least a less bad community, I guess you can say, in terms of attitude towards other players and things like that. Uh, Kai, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Freelancer for once. Um, I think in League of Legends, if you have a bad player, it definitely like literally ruins your whole match because you know your chances of actually winning are really down. However, I think in Guild Wars 2, there is a little bit more leeway. If someone is a bad player, you know, the rest of the team can try and help them, but I think people should still be encouraged to be good players and be given advice and things like that because, I mean, even though it does focus on your own glory, your own glory could be dampened by there being a bad player, which could cause you to lose. So I think you should still en encourage people to, you know, be better players and not just be like, oh, he's a bad player, don't worry about it. I'm just, you know, all for myself. I think you should still try and improve people. Freelancer, you like that comment from Lena Lionheart? <laughs> Yeah, she's saying as long as the bad players right click my catapult <laughs> to build when I put <laughs> then it down, it, everything is okay. I <laughs> totally agree with her. I couldn't help but smile when I read that because it's so true. As long I was as in you... World v. World like all weekend. I mean, I obviously, you know, we kicked butt in there, Team Legacy. But uh, the structure PvP that I did do, I was streaming uh, during it. Um, I don't know. I just noticed. You have so many beneficial things you can give your partner. You know, it's good to have a player that understands you're giving them those those boons. That's all. Absolutely. All right, so let us move on because we have a ton of stuff to talk about today. Let's talk about the news this week. And uh, this is essentially uh, some stuff that I picked up from last week and then a bunch of really cool links as a result of what's going on uh, during the beta and things like that. And so I wanted to sort of go over them a little bit with you guys. Uh, the first one is an amazing story. If, you, if you're, you know, you're jonesing for more Guild Wars 2, uh, Guild Wars 2 The Inside Story is a Eurogamer.net article. So I'm going to check that out right now and show you a little bit about it. They've got a really cool set of pictures from the ArenaNet studios that were built, I think, in 2011 when they were sort of getting full swing into Guild Wars 2. Uh, so you can see they got a gaming station here and, you know, tons of games, board games. This is like their sort of chill zone. They get a, they get, they got foosball, they got table tennis. They've got a D and D set up over here. I mean, this looks like the best place to work ever, but I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> there's a kitchen with a bunch of different cool stuff going on there. You got, so, I mean, this just looks really cool. And this is like 20 of the pictures. I like this one. You got the George Costanza and, and you got Kramer there in the background. That's awesome. Uh, and what else did we see there? Uh, <laughs> a bunch of cool stuff on this whiteboard. It's just awesome. And the, the article itself blew me away. And I had a few quotes to pull out from it that I put into the show notes. Um, one thing that, I, that John Peters said is, quote, I worked a lot at other game companies, and big games that I worked on are dwarfed by the scope of this game. Imagine you're trying to build one of the biggest games ever, and you're trying to build Facebook at the same time, and you're trying to let people play it within Facebook, unquote. That... That is a pretty massive statement, and I think it goes to show you how they feel as a company, what they're trying to do in terms of the scope of things. So I got all of the other great stuff, uh, other great quotes in there for you to check out if you want to. Uh, that's all in the show notes, uh, so check that out if you feel like it. Let's jump into the next story, because I do want to get to our thoughts on the beta. Now this is a really interesting piece. It's a link to a massive wall of text from the <laughs> ArenaNet developer. Let me find if I found the right page here. It's actually, it is on page one. Okay, good. Uh, so this is a whole thread of people complaining about the Norn storyline. And this is something that I remember going back to the, uh, the PC gamer uh, thread, uh, not thread, but uh, write-up, I think, where they said, you know, one of their editors was wondering why the other people were so upset with what they were doing. It turned out everybody who was upset with their personal story had played a Norn. And everybody who played a chart and a human had a great time. And so this whole thread is filled with criticisms. And this is Bobby Stein, one of the main guys in the writing team, that responds to each and every little stupid point. And the communication that's going on here is that you, would, would you ever see this on the World of Warcraft forums? No. <laughs> this is not a blue post. Look, I'm Look still scrolling. Look how long that reply is. Yeah. That's when I saw that, I was just like, whoa. Like, he really cares what people think about, and that's, like, something to be proud of. 
And the response too, it wasn't uh, like, yeah, you're wrong. The story is great and here's why. He basically said, yes, I understand why you didn't like it. What we did was have different writers tackle the different stories so that they would have different feels so that everybody would be able to have their own sort of sense of what's going on because you could have one story that's very heroic and traditional fantasy style which is I think the, probably the human story and then you have one of sort of infighting within a military organization which is what the char one is and the norn one is sort of another kind of heroic for glory everything kind of blah 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 and we, we have yet to obviously see what's going on with the Asura and the uh, the and, and the and the Silvari but I'm sure that we will see that soon uh, Vega I think is re restarting Skype to get back in here is that what he's doing uh, yeah, I looks like. Okay, so I thought that and so if you want to read all that definitely go check that out It's a really cool response. I liked it a lot Let's pop on to the next piece of news so we can get to the good stuff. This is really cool uh, Guild Wars 2 GW2DB.com is is what you're uh, you're gonna want to uh, check out here and I'm gonna open this up for you It's basically the kind of curse database that you'd expect from other games and I don't know I think they pulled a lot of this out of the game itself because I mean yeah I don't it looks know like how actual they pictures like screenshots type thing doesn't it I mean the actual like icons look like they've just screenshotted the game but yeah. that's a lot of work I looked at it earlier like there is a lot of stuff on they there they must have pulled it out of the dat file there's no way they did this by hand I mean look at all this stuff this is definitely pulled out of the dat file what's more and this is one of the coolest things now um I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up here and then I'm gonna pull this up here we can take a look at all of it this is really cool uh here let's do this and let's make this over here and let's make this here so there we go this is every single map pulled out of the game file apparently all the the data was in the game we just couldn't access it so let me see divinity's reach right here we can zoom in and look at it here's the main queensdale area that so many people quested in. and this matches up right here onto the side onto the left hand side here uh so this is queensdale i think you could also go to this area here um and then uh what do we have over here we have the norn holbrook and this is the main area here uh, for the Norn starting area. Here's the Char and the Char starting area. And so, I mean, just look at this and then realize that you've only been to like one, two, three, four of these zones, maybe? It's, it's, it's massive. I can't believe it. And then look at this. So here is somebody who, who took the time and did what I wanted to do, which was highlight the areas that you may have gone to in the beta. And then realize just how much more there is. Wow. Yep. <laughs> I'm excited. I want the next beta already. I want to explore. I know. I, I didn't realize in my, like, 35 hours, I, I didn't even scratch the surface of what was in the beta. That's amazing. <laughs> I can't wait for this stupid game. Did you not, like, go to multiple zones? Did you, like, focus on PvP? No, or? I did. I, I went to, I did a lot of the Queensdale stuff, but I never got past level 15, so I didn't go to any, like, the uh, 15 okay. to 25 zones, and I know there was, I think, two or three of those. They were really good i mean the 15 to 25 were definitely a lot better than like the one to i think queen style's like one to 17 yeah um, they were a lot more interesting there's a lot more like dynamic events happening and bosses and things like that you feel that guild wars 2 is properly represented in these zones whereas in the starting area it's very much like this is how you play these are the kind of things you'll encounter whereas when you get to 15 to 25 it's a lot more like these are epic bosses these are big group events and you know you need your friends to do this and stuff like that and it all links together and the story is much more involved as well. So, yeah, I would definitely make sure you check that out next beta. Absolutely. All right, moving right along. And if you want to check out those pictures, by the way, the show notes are at www.talesoftyria.com. If you're watching this on the Sound Strategy Network YouTube channel, you can find them the, the link to the show notes in the description right there. Tons and tons of links this week, so make sure you check those out. Now, here is a thread I found on the Guild Wars 2 forum, and it was basically a big, big thing where people said, listen, there's a delay between when you hit an ability and when the ability triggers in the game, and it's killing us our ability to play competitive etc etc et there's a lot of people talking about this and I believe is it Jonathan Sharp who responds one of the arena net developers responds or John Peters sorry uh, that says quote I believe the ability delay 
people that are noticing is actually server lag. We have a very large number of testers this weekend and the servers are under stress that we have not experienced before. The way actual combat works is that each skill has an associated animation as well as points in the animation that trigger the damage. Everything is based on real animation timing, which is being thrown off by the servers being pounded. Rest assured, we understand this makes the game and combat much less responsive and will be working hard to improve performance in upcoming beta weekends and toward release. Unquote. So that is very reassuring. Did you guys yep. feel that uh, delay that he's talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even I, I, well, I, mean, I, I definitely felt it in PvP, but I, I mean, I guess in World v. World, I was getting like five frames a second, so it doesn't really count there <laughs> it's important but, to note though that this is a beta you know so yeah. it's all, the people complaining about the starting zone that's one thing you know that was a genuine content we don't like it you know please mm -hmm. try to fix it uh with the with the lag i mean if you went into beta not expecting lag eh, you know Frame i don't issues. really have much to I'm, say. I'm yeah. surprised that Frame there wasn't issues. technical difficulties to be well honest. now if you remember with the frame issues we all got into beta initially friday night and I, half of my guild was complaining that they could not do just a tower siege without two frames a second. Now, the servers went down, we restarted, and then they came back and said, well, now I can play it like 20 frames per second. It was a little better. People were Nothing saying, wow, changed. this is Definitely. noticeably better. And then the third time it went down, people were saying that, you know, they've got to be doing something because here I am playing at medium to high settings and I'm getting great frame rates. So. They were obviously working on it, but you, uh, there's forum threads all over. I was a little disappointed to see it. It's just beta. This is it's intentional, and they are obviously working on it. We should all be very proud of what they're doing. Yeah, they definitely did change something, and I was really happy with it. I mean, my computer is like, apart from my graphics card and my power supply, the rest is like really like low. I couldn't literally play at the beginning, and then after a while, it got to a point where I could actually like record on fraps and play at the same time and still have like 30 FPS. So they definitely like improved something. Like I don't know what it was, but it got so much better. And they also pointed out before the beta even started that right now the status of the game is that your graphics card probably is largely irrelevant as long as you have any kind of decent graphics card at all. But monster graphics cards will not help you because the problem is the game is unoptimized. It has not gotten to the point where they've shifted the graphical engine uh, actual processing completely to the graphics card. There's still a lot of stuff that's being crunched on the CPU, which is not yep. the ideal place for the graphical crunching that needs to be done. Now that that sort of uh, that sort of optimization is done at the end of a game development cycle because the optimization that you do depends upon all the other features of the game sort of being static and done. You cannot optimize and then change something because then you have to go and re-optimize it again. So that's, that's the kind of thing that we're going to see improve as we get closer to release. That probably yeah. explains why I was able to stream at max and stuff and I didn't have those issues. But we had a lot of members that were saying they had like a 680 GTX or a 580 GTX which, uh, I mean, I just have a 560, but I was streaming 60 FPS, you know, nonstop. But, but you uh, have a super CPU. But my, yeah, yeah, but my processor was running at 5.2 gigahertz, Sandy Bridge. So, you know, that explain, that perfectly explains, Bridger, how I was able to stream and run so solidly, whereas these guys that had better graphics cards than me were getting horrible frame rates. So I, when they get that optimized, it's going to be golden. I mean, how you remember how beautiful that game was? Oh I mean, it was gorgeous. God, it's amazing. So... You don't, I mean, I played on low the whole time, and I still felt like, wow, this looks amazing. Like, mm -hmm. it, I, it really looks good. And it, I've seen videos, I know, like, a couple of people did it where they changed this, like, graphic settings from high to low, so you could see the difference. And I mean, yeah, there is a difference with, like, the shading and the textures and things like that, but it still looks amazing. The way the art is fitted in, you can really actually see they've, like, worked hard on making it look good. I mean, I, I said it to you, Bridger, um, that I think this game looks... 10 times better than Skyrim and a lot of people use Skyrim as like the the environment genius of you know mm -hmm. beautiful scenery in a video game and the cities in this game alone are just like breathtaking the the massive size of them I think that this game is gonna be the new sort of like standard this is the, the pinnacle of great environment design absolutely nothing nothing will be watching a trebuchet shot go off and just completely break apart you know and 
and yeah, shape, I, screen and everything and you're just your your whole guild your raid is just like what the heck was that and it, it all matches up it's <laughs> that's what amazed me too is if you watch the trebuchet shot it doesn't look disjointed like okay the trebuchet shoots and then a particle effect appears in midair and then travels to its destination and then it disappears and there's an explosion it all syncs up correctly so that you yeah. see the treb shot actually leave the trebuchet and then hit so those kinds of details it, that attention to detail is what makes the environment as a whole so amazing. But the other thing has to be the scale, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, the keeps when you're when you're sitting at like the wall of the keep and you're looking up and you just see this towering thing, just right behind the wall. It's just, and and, and I get chills when I think about the fact that the game's not even optimized yet. Yeah. How everything's yeah. gonna look speaking, better. Speaking of the skill, Bridger, was there ever a moment that you felt like you were taking entirely too wrong to uh, too long? to run from one point worldly world to another, for example. I mean, no, not uh, really, right? No, uh, yo, yeah, you mean in terms of you know? this is getting boring because it's taking too long to get there. Yeah, no, I didn't feel that in World vs. World, really. I, I felt that about two minutes into World v. World. Like, <laughs> okay, I, I'm not like a, a hardcore PvPer like you guys, but I literally got into World v. World, um, got to my waypoint, ran, because we like dominated the server completely. I think there was like two towers that were like left to take. So I ran all the way there, it took me like 10 minutes. I ran there, I got killed, and then obviously like I got killed, and then got back to the waypoint, and I was like, screw this, I am not running all the way back, and then just went back to PvP. You, you gotta do what, what Team Legacy did. We we actually got our mesmers to coordinate portals so that you would enter one portal, appear at the exit of another, which was also on top of the entrance of another, and you would instantly port like a quarter mile away or even further. <laughs> and the only reason we couldn't right. get it even further than that is because we didn't have enough mesmers. But like, it was like all at once, everybody get ready to enter the, the main portal. You hit that portal and you're teleported a quarter of the way across the entire map instantly. And, <laughs> and I just... Uh, that was amazing, and I just wish we had more Mesmers. We had like four Mesmers in our guild. What was up with that, Bridger? Uh, completely unrelated <laughs> note, Team Legacy is now uh, recruiting Division Mesmers. 2 Mesmers. Okay, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, I mean, there was, all right, uh, how about you guys? How many Elementalists did you see running around versus like Warriors or Guardians or, or, or any class? What did you see the most of, you think? Hmm. In, in PvP, I, I think I saw a pretty kind of balanced... There, I didn't see one class more than I saw the others, at least in PvP, because, you know, you're, it's a smaller kind of pool. Um, I but saw I was, a lot of rangers. I was, seeing, I was seeing a lot of elementalists, and I was seeing a lot of thieves. Uh, in my guild, it was predominantly, like, guardians and necros. I, see, we didn't have a lot of guardians. I wish we did, because that would have helped in the sieges. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but we didn't have a lot of guardians. It, basically, we were filled up with elementalists, uh, rangers, and... Uh, a good mix of thieves. Everybody else was kind of like in the, the oddballs, you know? And it was interesting. Um, I mean, granted, we had a lot of AoEs and such, but uh, it, I was expecting to see a lot more Mesmers because that's kind of the... I don't know. Maybe it's just because I roll a Mesmer. <laughs> no, it's just because you think that Mesmers are the best. So you No, they are, the, they are the best. I'll tell you one thing, Kai. I learned that Mesmers are not the best. But in certain areas, they you can't beat. I mean, the fact that I could... Uh, control the entire raid with portals and the, uh, I forget the name of the thing now, the distortion veil, uh, where you can buff your entire raid and stuff. It's just such a utility class and it, it just opened my eye and you got blink and all this other stuff. Um, whereas think, the elements, you, you have to be a good player to make that work though. In Ruby World, ever. I mean, you can't be elementalists they just have that meteor shower that is just so powerful. I mean, who Love needs that thing. You have elementalists on the wall. I mean, come on. Um, now, I, I saw a lot of elementalists, but that might be because I was an elementalist, and so I was able to recognize a lot of the spells that I saw, but I definitely saw a lot of rangers. There was a lot of pets running around. Yeah. I God, pets. I hate pets. <laughs> like, I hate, I hate so uh, when, when, they're, when they're dead, they're still walking around, so when I'm trying to go and res someone, and you, know, you see, pet. like, hit, hit F to res someone, and I'm yeah, res is the pet. pet. <laughs> I remember uh, in our raid, Solstitch, uh, Solstitch MMO, he's on Twitter, guys, if you want to find him. He specifically told our raid, like, guys, stop reviving the pets. And he, <laughs> then on top of that, he would tell our guy, it was hilarious every time. He's like, Rangers, please switch out your pets before they die. <laughs> switch, out, switch out your pets once they're dead. Or it was, it was just like, because the pets are so annoying. They run around. 
and you run up to try to revive your friends, right? And there's just a pit standing right on top of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the awesome. bear just thought, you know, the I undead bear you. thought that was a great place to stand. I just it, saw it, a rangers running around with dead pets all the time, and I was like, do they realize they can res them or anything? Like, in PvE, they're, they're running around on their own, and there's just, like, dead pets following them, and I'm like, why aren't you <laughs> resing them? What is wrong with you? I don't know. The pets just seem stupid. I mean, just, a lot of people said the bear was really good, that apparently the bear's, like, unstoppable, but apart from that, everything else was dead. It, it was, it, you're right, though. I mean, pets were never alive in World v. World, were they? I mean, ever. No. It's just like... Well, don't they regen on their own eventually, and then they go and they die again? Because they can't, they can't dodge. <laughs> all all <laughs> they did was add to the clipping. That's all they did. <laughs> all right, so we kind of got off into a tangent there, but well, let's finish up what we had here for the news. I have various links to lots of cool stuff. We're not going to talk about any of this stuff, but I thought I'd throw it in there for people that wanted to see it. Uh, Lion's Arch before and after images. If you actually took the time to dive under the water in the bay of Lion's Arch, you'd see a lot of uh, familiar sights from the Guild Wars 1, so definitely check that out. Uh, there's an awesome jumping puzzle in World vs. World that I never noticed in the top northwest corner of the bat, uh, uh, bat, uh, Borderlands, there we go. Uh, somebody did a, a video on that, there's a link there. Uh, another thing that I didn't know until I found this post on Reddit is that if you have crafting materials, common crafting materials, the kinds of things that you can gather from the world, you can right click on them and send them to your bank anywhere in the world to clear out your yeah. inventory. So, yeah, nice so doesn't that go into a collection? Can you like take them out again? Or Yes, like... you can take them out you again. Can. We'll talk about because, that in a bit. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a really cool video that shows off the environment of, uh, of of Guild Wars 2 called What a Wonderful World. And it's just Louis Armstrong and a really cool set of, uh, of videos put together, and it's great. Uh, there's another video, seven cool events that you may have missed in the beta. It shows the, the fight with the shadow behemoth or whatever it is in the Queensdale, a bunch of other cool stuff. Now, here's one I actually want to, uh, to feature because this is kind of interesting. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. They had an animation for when somebody falls to their death right next to you? <laughs> <laughs> what? For those of you just That's listening so to the funny. show, it's just a picture of a female <laughs> elementalist or something standing there, just a human, and then suddenly a body falls from the sky and she jumps out of the way with a scream. That was great. That I was amazing. Never, I never noticed that. What? I never noticed that either. I just found it in that video. <laughs> That's so funny. But where'd the body come from? That's a good question. <laughs> I assume they did. She looks it on like purpose. she's on a mountain or something. Well, I think it was on a a, a bay or something that effect. It, it looked like it was in oh. Lion's Arch or something. Anyway, check that out if you didn't see it. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a really cool thread on MMO Champion, and I'll briefly show this here. Uh, it's got information about all of the dungeons, what their level requirements are, and they pointed out that the vendors that are in Lion's Arch that will redeem the tokens for you actually show off the heavy version of the armors for each of the dungeons. So you can see here, that's what the... Uh, spoilers! Spoilers! This is what the armor looks like for the different dungeons that you can... Uh, so that if you beat the dungeons, you can get use tokens to pay for these armors. These are the heavy examples. So some of them look really badass. I like that one there with the, with the, with the spikies. And then you got the Asura wearing this one here. That one looks really weird. The Citadel of Flame heavy set. It looks to be on a char. Yeah, so uh, and then this one here. This one kind of interesting. This one we'd seen, I think, some mock-ups for earlier. So, and then apparently right next to it is a, a, an old friend, Dougal Kane, who will answer some questions for you. So I thought that was pretty cool. Definitely check those out if you are interested. There's a, there's a link again in the show notes. Talesateria.com is where you can find them. This I'll is really cool. I'll shamelessly plug like a little thing because it's a related thing. If you guys actually want to see the stats of the weapons and the gear, I've got a video detailing every vendor and what they sell on my YouTube channel. All right, send me Just that if, link. I'll throw that in the show notes as well. Yeah. So this is a pretty cool little breakdown somebody made of the ranges of the trebuchet in Battle for Kylo. We'll talk about this and other stuff later. I just thought I'd throw this link in there uh, for you guys that want to check it out. And uh, let's see. I think that brings us to the final, final link I wanted to present to you guys. Uh, that's not the link at all. Okay. Well, it's incorrect. <laughs> I'll get the actual link and, uh, and sort of give you guys the, the look here. Da, 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 da. 
this is the link here. Um, and, and we're not going to play this whole thing or anything like that, but I do want to show you a little, a little taste of the battle for Dreaming Bay. And you guys can definitely check this out. This is a fight that, uh, that, that Team Legacy had against a lot of the Reddit guys, as well as maybe some of the Game Breaker TV guys that were on Dark Haven, and we were on Crystal Desert. So let's watch this for just uh, like 30 or 40 seconds here at the beginning, because it's, uh, it's pretty epic. Card to support. And this time, when we came back, the, enemy, the other team, they could keep making sure they were able to take down, did not hold it. So we had it pushing forward forward trying to get in to as I find the correct spot in my video <laughs> there we go set the stage there you ready to kill guards there's the okay there's run the, up the run up the ramp run up the ramp ah, portal's gone run up the ramp incoming exit if you have your slideshow, turn down to the minimum graphics setting. So anyway, this is uh, sort of a, a gives you a good taste of what World vs. World was like. Uh, so definitely check out that video if you wanted to get a look at that. Uh, Freelancer and I and Vega, I think, was there for a short period of it. But that was one of the most epic things that I have ever experienced in that a was a Yeah, it was a two, almost, I'd say almost two and a half hour long siege with the Reddit guys. Isaiah Cartwright was there. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I got a little whisper from him about that. Uh, I got an Isaiah Rose, which is a little, you know, a little two tilde and little at symbols. It was awesome. Um, but he he was just impressed at the organization and just the the fact that there is such thing as not being a Zerg and having forty people work together. It was, it was really really fun. Um, special thanks to all the Reddit people that were there. It was like the entire that was their server or their key. They, they owned it the Reddit Guild and uh, a lot of Game Breaker guys there as well. It was amazing. I had a blast. I don't think there was a single person leaving, including the Reddit guys, um, that didn't just say, oh my God, that was the best thing ever that I've ever done in game. So. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I can't even describe how, how much fun we were having for that whole thing. Uh, I mean, despite the fact that for the entire whole beginning, like we, I think we tried like three or four times just that night with no success and it was the final time that it worked but you said that you guys had been trying to get that specific keep pretty much all day how many hours did you spend that day trying to take that keep well we kept making our rounds going around and um and each time we came past streaming bay of course reddit you know in mass was like team legacies here and you just instantly see 150 people <laughs> on the wall and you know and, and that's fine you know we're not gonna run away so we kept trying to attack them and Eventually, they would jump off the wall and just mass, you know, kill us. And and uh, we were we were good sports about it. We were like, we'll, we'll be back, we'll be back. You know, we finally came back a little later that afternoon, about four hours later, and uh, challenged Isaiah. We called him out. We called the, we called the, the Reddit guys I out. I challenge you to honorable combat. And um, you know, <laughs> if you remember, the local chat was broken. I don't know if that's intentional. Is it, was it broken or was? I don't know if it's broken or not. But yeah, you could talk to people on the other team using local chat. That was weird. Yeah. yeah that you're hauling out. We're heading to Dream Bay. Heading to Dream Bay. We finally got there for real, and it was just we we decided, okay, we're not just gonna rush the front door and stuff. We're gonna try these crazy little tactics. So we had our, uh, well, I guess it's no big secret now, but we had a very specific way of getting past the first door without letting them bombard us. It's a choke point. We had portal teams basically running our mesmers back and forth and porting. Uh, pugs and stuff from the outside into the inner wall um, so that we wouldn't have to deal with the guards at the front gate. We had our fortress within the fortress that we were holding out and anybody that died respawned and we had the portal going from the citadel to this this fortress, Dreaming Bay. So uh, from not only the outside, the immediate outside, we also had the Mesmer train portals bringing people in from the respawn point and it worked every, every once in a while, sometimes lag got us, but the, the idea that you could respawn, run, not even 10 seconds and then instantly poured inside the enemy keep again. It just helped everything. They had, the great part about it in World v. World is they had the superior numbers, but we had the, the siege weapons and we were able to collaborate with that. And it got to a point where uh, he, like I was saying, Isaiah, when we finally poured it in and killed the keep lord, he, he was just like, that was, you know, that was great. He sent me a little rose, uh, congratulated us. What do you mean a little rose? Exactly. Yeah, well the two little, uh, he, here, I'll, I'll type in a chat here, if you can explain it. He did this little guy here, just like that. Or yeah, what, oh. uh, what Uber Oh, rate. okay, so you gave um, But it, it oh. was just, it was really cool to get complimented by them. Um, and it was, I- Oh, I, an ASCII rose, just two tildes yeah. and an at symbol. I see what you're saying. 
and um, it's just all together. TL aside, there was so there was other guilds working with us in the Ascension Alliance, and just the coordination we have to, you know, instead of just bum rushing a door, actually setting people to sap continually sap the supply chains to come up we had teams of people that were specifically set to kill the zergs that were trying to rush us from the inside of the keep the reddit guild um and we also had teams that were our strike teams to get to the trebuchets that were at the enemy points so we we had the mesmer teams that would port at our little mini fortress inside of their fortress and instantly port to the trebuchet they wouldn't see it because we'd be invisible going there we had invisible chains going to it we destroy the trebuchet and then immediately get back. And it's just the whole coordination between all the guilds was amazing. I'm, I'm sure our, our story is one of many. I, I would love to hear from everybody that's listening to this. If you had a epic, epic world v. world battle, yes. I, I want to hear about it because I can relate. I mean, I think that's going to be the, the question of the week. Feedback, feedback at talesofteria.com. If you have an epic world versus world story, send it to us. If we read it on air, you get to pull from the, the, the dwindling pile of packs supplies. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, feedback or, at talesofteria.com. Or if they even took a video of people were recording stuff and they got a video of it. Oh, that'd be cool. Video would be even too. better. But uh, even a good story, we're looking for. All right, let's, let's get up to the actual beta experience. But before we get there, uh, I was reading the Guild Wars 2 forums and I came across uh, a number of things that kind of got me a little upset. And when I get upset, I have to vent. And when I vent, it's called a Bridger rant. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I have to go on it again. I'm reading this thread and the titles just, just jumped out at me and already the vein was bulging in my head. It was entitled, Get Rid of the Level Downgrade ASAP. And it said, quote, it's ridiculous. It serves no purpose. I earned my levels, so let me use them if I want to go to an area that's not necessarily up to my level. One of the most annoying things in WoW is having level 60 mods stun me and mind control me even though I'm level 85. Get rid of the downgrade. Well, you know, champ, I gotta say, I disagree with you entirely! I don't even understand the concept behind this. The person who responded is exactly correct. Campbellham says, a wolf is a wolf wherever you go. It doesn't make sense that a wolf in this area is a Super Saiyan and the wolf in the other area is Super Saiyan level 4, okay? I don't necessarily like the metaphor that he's using, but I understand the sentiment. The sentiment? It's a lot like a sentiment. And I just have to say that this is the kind of person that's been basically drained by WoW to say, you know what? It's okay if you're not good enough. You don't have to get better. Instead, just go and spend some time over here for a while, and when we when you come back, we'll do the work for you. We'll let your character's stats speak for you. You don't have to actually improve. You don't have to think about what you're doing. You just have to mindlessly hit buttons. Why should you have to think about what you're doing? I was really happy to find out that everything was challenging, even though I was in a lower level zone. I was actually super worried that when I got there, it was going to be down... Okay, I was downgraded, but I'm still way too powerful for this zone and everything's easy. That wasn't the case! I was so ecstatic when I found out that I could get killed by two or three mobs, even though I was level 17 and I was a level 3 zone. I gotta tell you, that was one of the best parts of the beta for me, to be honest. Was that, was, was that sort of pleasant surprise, because I honestly expected it to be the other way around. And here comes this guy that says, I want to be able to kill all the things with basically no effort, except uh, I do need to spend a little time, and then that way I earn it, because that means it's okay for me to be overpowered. No thanks. No thanks. That's, that's not my game. Get out of here. Go back to wherever you're going. We don't want you here. Or adapt and welcome. Join the club. There was one point where I think level downgrades are a little bit annoying. I don't think you should be downgraded if you're in a city because I would like to look around and actually see what level people are because as another player, I can't actually see what level people are. I think they should implement something that says, like, you know, they're level 28, but they're downgraded. Or, you know, because it I just actually shows that they were that downgraded actual... in the city. In, in the city itself or in the instances, like the home instances? Um, in, like, Divinity's Reach, it downgrades you to level 15. Oh, I didn't notice that. And it might yeah, have something to do annoying. with the personal story. I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you there. I don't know why it would downgrade you when you're in the city. Yeah, it's kind of, I would like to actually see what level people are. So I think there should be an option where you can see someone's actual level. But because it'd be interesting. <laughs> 
But yeah, uh, I that's one that's one point of feedback I just wanted to make is that the PVE did feel more challenging than I expected it to be. It was more challenging than questing in WoW. That's for especially when you got up to the higher areas and two or three guys could uh, could could hit you with power attacks and and kill you in a couple hits. You did have to be on your toes. So anyway, that's that's my little rant there. We're gonna move on to the round table here where we talk about pretty much everything in the game one piece at a time. And let me just put this in here, 39 minutes in, there we go. So, we're going to start by talking about the interface and the systems in the game. Uh, we're going to talk about the UI, graphics, auction house, chat. Where do you guys want to start? Uh... <laughs> Wherever. Let's start with chat, because there was a lot of people that, were, that, have, that have not been fans of the chat system. Hey. So we've got, what is it, we've got a couple of different types of chat. You have local chat, which seems to be... Not entire regions, like not entirely Queensdale, but the area around you that's in a sort of broader than what you, for example, think of as slash say in World of Warcraft. Um, it, it's not zone wide, but it's like half zone wide. Is that your your guys' impression? Yeah, it's like uh, kind of like around you. I mean, it's not being confirmed that it's like not totally the whole zone. I don't know how people will know it's not the whole zone where they stood on one side and still on the other and see if they hear each other. Yeah, you know, I didn't do that, so I don't know. But everyone kind of said that it was just kind of like your local area, which I think is kind of silly. Like, I don't know, silly to me. I don't think there was a time when we couldn't hear somebody that was all the way across the map. I mean, yeah. maybe it is zone wide. I mean, we even had a little fun on the last day there trolling the enemy server because we found out that you know local chat can be said to anybody. So we're like enemies. They're going to this point, and we're there's nobody going there. You know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, funny. So you, it, you know it's hilarious. You know that so. You, the, yeah, the, the way that, you have to sell to that fixed. then after that is have somebody else reply and say, don't don't say it in local chat, you idiot. Crystal Desert can hear you. And that way, <laughs> <laughs> that sells it. That's I remember right I there. remember saying enemies are going to this point. We're nowhere near that point. And actually uh, sending a bug report, taking a screenshot and saying, this is why you need to fix this. <laughs> 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 and, and actually getting there. And like there was people arriving there, I guess, from the other server, Dark Haven server. And saying, I don't see any Zerg. <laughs> don't worry, they must be invisible. Keep Just keep looking. Yeah, yeah. Messes everywhere. <laughs> so we said we said bug reports, but I mean, besides local chat, it seemed like local chat covered everything. A lot of people were saying that the team chat wasn't working, but it was working for us. So I don't know, maybe just for certain servers, it was kind of buggy. You know, it just depends. And guild chat worked perfectly, I think. Um, One thing that annoyed me about the chat was that um, there wasn't like a say chat and local chat didn't have like chat bubbles. So for example, there would be someone standing next to me who I want to like get involved in this event and I'm trying to talk to them. But if they have their chat box hidden or, you know, they're not actually looking at it, I can't contact them unless I like directly whisper them. It would just be cool to have like a say feature where I could just talk to the people next to me rather than having to like bug them with a whisper or whatever. I just think, it w you know, if you're not actually paying attention to the chat, it was really hard to contact people like in your media area. Yeah, exactly. I, I understand that context entirely because I was doing a dynamic event that was actually probably tuned a little bit harder than it needed to be, but I sort of found the 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 way to get through it was to not aggro, like it was basically hold this this point in the center and mobs would spawn and move into the center. Now they would also spawn and not move into the center. So you had to not aggro the mobs that were on the exterior and instead sit in the center and only kill the things that came into the center so that you could actually you know get the bar to fill up all the yeah. way. So I was trying to tell people, hey, don't aggro the mobs unless they're in the center already attacking you. But I was telling that to the whole of Queensdale. Yes, yeah, so they're so, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. How do they know that that's who I'm talking to? The same thing could be said for world versus world. If we're trying to say, you know, okay, take the left tower first or take out the, the, the oil on the wall. Well, who the hell is it? Are the people that are following us that hear that? Or is it the people on the other team? Or is it the people attacking yeah. the other tower? Who's that directed at? We don't know. And especially yeah. with only five party members, it's a bit annoying because you can't like invite everyone to this big raid group. You do have to talk to them locally. And I just think local is too big for something like that. You need something that's smaller, such as say, or you know, somewhere that you can actually talk that is just for that specific area you're in. Yeah, and, and, my, and minor, minor gripe, but arena net, you're watching this, I'm looking right at you. <laughs> slash T, if you're gonna have a team chat and you have to type slash team, and slash T is a whisper. That's just, it, it, I can't count how many people are like, I can't get team chat working because they have to actually type forward slash 
T E A M E, you know, and yeah, because and, tells and, and whispers exactly. is how so, they're known in other games. Sla- if you're going to have team chat slash T severe, you know, your team chat, you shouldn't have to forward slash and type out team in order to switch between. Well, the you two. can click on where it's saying, just click team. Yeah, you well, yeah. I mean, I'm talking about on the fly though. I mean, there are so yeah. many times that, that guild members and the pub players were, were trying to tell them use team chat, use team chat, and they were like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm typing slash T and it keeps going to a whisper. And uh, we're like, no, you actually have to type out team. Well, why do I have to do that? Well, you just have to. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, and just it, do Because we were trying to get the pugs that were following us. We, we did the no, uh, no Fan Left Behind Act on Guru. And so we invited the entire community to, if you didn't have a guild, didn't have any buddies, to come, you know, run with Team Legacy. We're going to treat you like a guild member, and we're going to let you have a blast, you know. So when we had all these people following us, and they were in our team speak, some of them were um they were you know trying to be a part of the team they really wanted to feel like you know hey i can i can be you know a scout you know and call out where the enemy's coming from but when they did it they typed in local chat so <laughs> it was like use team chat and then they couldn't figure it out so hopefully they get that that kind of worked around i mean if you're gonna have team chat it should be slash t and you yeah, know that's that's easy team chat t you know like any other game so yeah i um, I, I did have a brain fart right now I had something to say, uh, but the the thing about that, and I agree with you entirely with the slash T, I would actually prefer, and I know there is a shortcut for responding to someone, like you could type slash R, or you can just hit the backspace button to reply to the last person that whispered you, and I like that a lot. I'd really like to, and I I forgot to check the damn hotkeys, but I would love to have, to be able to set a different hotkey for team chat, for local chat, and for those kinds, and for guild chat. Like, you know, enter is whatever chat you're already in shift enter is automatically team chat you know a lot of rts's use that system backspace is your uh, is is reply to the most recent person maybe i could set you know you to be my uh guild chat or whatever i want I just hit the button it would open up that specific thing instead of having to hit enter slash g enter slash t enter slash w whatever i just love to be able to uh to use specific hotkeys and that might be in well, i just don't know if it was in there well, speaking of hotkeys, did they? I, I I didn't even bother trying it, but just thinking about it now, did they add in having the uh, the shift function? They did not, like, and everybody was upset about I, that. I, I think that's one of the biggest pet peeves I have right now because just for I just want it for the F1 to F4. I just want shift one, shift two, shift, shift three, shift four because the F1 mm-hmm. and F4 buttons are just slightly too far above that. I need to move my hand slightly. You sir and, need a naga. <laughs> I do have a Naga. I do have a Naga, but I have my six through zero skills on my Naga, and then I still have my one through four skills on my keyboard. I, and then I how many buttons do you what have you left on with, the Naga? What are you doing oh, with Q and E and F G and Z X C and all that? Um. Well, Z X C. I guess I, I could change it to Q and E and I, I tell you, stuff, casuals. But... <laughs> casuals. Casuals. <laughs> but the simple solution is casuals. Add in, add in, add in the shift. Head in the ship. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. That. They should have modifiers. A lot of the WoW players, arena players, they're very used to using the modifiers because there were so many skills, mm-hmm. and that's just natural for them. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it should still be there. I would just like to use the modifier with my thumb buttons because I do have four thumb buttons, and that's actually it's way easier to hit a thumb button while I'm using WASD to move. If I have to take a finger off the D key, for example, to hit the four, what if I want to be strafing right? Well, now I got to do some finger gymnastics because I got to take a finger off the W to do. But what if I want to be strafing? right and forward now I got to do I mean we're gonna wrap the thumb around there I don't think that's gonna work so uh, I, I would love to ha- be able to hit shift with my pinky and then hit one of the four buttons so that way I basically have eight thumb buttons instead of four that seems to be much more beneficial to me uh, so I I would love that as well I'm, I I would be using that a lot for that specific purpose uh, all right but anyway so chat hotkeys uh, any other hotkey woes there I think uh, I liked most of other things besides the the shift thing uh, what about the view? Uh, it felt kind of constricted, right? You felt a little yeah, too close. I, I was, I was, I was, like, I was whoa, trying to look for an option to change it. Yeah, I was like, I was like there like, has to be an option somewhere that I could zoom this out more. <laughs> also, you should be able to go in first person as well. Like, I don't get why you can't. That, what Kai said, yeah. It was really frustrating taking photos and stuff when the only way you could get yourself out of the image was to uh, four slash sleep and then zoom in all the way. So, like, in order to get our guilt screenshots and the stone mist screenshot stuff uh, that we claimed, it, we I had to actually lay on the ground and sleep and then zoom in all the way. And it was, 
I don't know. I guess I'm just used to if you zoom in all the way, it's first person. Yeah, you know, they didn't have. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, when you when you zoom in all the way, it's almost pointless because you're staring at the back yeah, of your, your head. head. <laughs> you see yeah. But yeah. you couldn't zoom out enough. Like the camera distance just didn't seem like it was far enough. Like I like to be quite zoomed out. I like to see everything that's going on. And I felt that I couldn't see the actual whole dynamic event that I was doing because I was like only that far away from my character. And I think it should be further. Well, I did notice that when you do enter a dynamic event that has like big stuff going on, it does zoom the camera out slightly than if you were just normally running around a PVE area. Yeah, some, somebody else put that in the chat as well. I didn't notice that. I don't think I participated I in any that. meta events that, that I, did that. I was doing, I was at the one that was the, the shaman, the ice shaman or whatever oh, in the right, porn yeah. area. And uh, as soon as I got into the area, it zoomed out. I'm like, oh, this is great. And then as soon as it ended, it was like, mm. was like <laughs> oh. It's like, oh, oh, we just, uh, we just took the, the, the speed governors off your Ferrari and then put them back on. Yeah. Uh, so. so. Uh, I agree with that entirely. I always felt a little too constrained, and I really need that first-person view. So let's see. see what, I, I, the, the, I just want for real quick mm -hmm. for the. I don't want to be able to zoom out all the way so that I'm a spec because then I think that takes away from the fact that, let's say you're attacking a keep and you zoom all the way out, you can adjust the camera just so you could see what they're doing behind the keep walls and you could yeah. see how many numbers they have. I just want to be able to zoom out just a little bit more. I don't yeah, want to be able to zoom more. out all the way so that I could see the whole entire freaking keep, and I'm a little ant, you know? You know, hitting on what Vegas has said, this is probably another one of your subsections, Bridger, but he mentioned you don't want to be able to see behind keeps. I don't think there's a person in the game in beta that didn't have clipping issues to where certain keeps they ran up to, they could just see through them anyway. Yeah. I mean, it was the clipping uh, was one thing that I think everybody can relate to in World v. World. Uh, it was incredibly annoying. Have we heard anything on how they're going to, if, if they've acknowledged it, if they're going to fix it? Uh, I have, I didn't see any specific things about that in the forum, but if you definitely would, should, should go and either uh, uh, check to see if it's already been reported or report it yourself if, if it hasn't been, because we do want to get those fixed. And submitting more bug reports can never hurt. They'll just merge the threads together and, and keep them organized, basically, if you, if you accidentally, but do definitely search. Read all the guidelines and stuff for reporting in there. They've got a way that they want you to do it, which is more likely to get it fixed. And I had some weird camera issues as well. Like uh, sometimes if I walked in front of a tree, suddenly the camera would zoom way in to try and cut in front of the tree like it would never let anything be behind you by a certain distance and that would kind of screw me up and sometimes when I hit my right click to take control of the camera because uh, you know I'd be clicking something in the interface I go and hit right click to take control of the camera again suddenly the view would just skew straight up I had no that same reason. thing I, 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 I noticed other people said they had the same problem, so hopefully that gets fixed as well. I think I'm pretty sure I put a bug report in for that, so I'm looking forward to that getting fixed because that was really annoying in the middle of a fight, and I and I click and drag to move the camera around, and then I'm doing some other thing. I click again, and the camera's up in the ceiling, and I'm looking at the sky, and that's great, but the guy next to me is stabbing me in the gut, so uh, that was cool. Okay, so auction house. Did you guys play around with the auction house or uh, any, yeah, any of that, the bank or anything? It's really cool, actually. Um... The trading post that like, you can access it from anywhere. Um, you can buy and sell items from anywhere in the world, but you can only collect the items or your money if you're actually at a trading post. So, say for example, you're at a you know a crafting NPC and you're like, I need to buy this item. You can actually buy it from the NPC and then run to the trading post and collect it. So you've not got to keep trying to like run back and forth and find things, which is really cool. And it also means that you can actually clear bag space whilst you're running around and then just go and collect the money later. So it's quite cool. Yeah, the, I noticed that the money and the things that you buy on the auction house, you have to actually go to an auction house NPC or a trading post NPC, as they say, in order to collect that. So they've let you, you know, they streamlined the process of uh, my bag is full. Let me just sell a bunch of this stuff, which is great. And then they still force you to go back to town to pick up the stuff, which is actually kind of yeah. good, too, because otherwise you'd never have a reason to leave. So I like mm -hmm. that a lot. Uh, Freelancer, yeah. you're the economy guy. You like to, to break economies. How, did you play around with that this weekend? <laughs> uh, I broke it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's pretty easy to manipulate, but um, one of the big things about the auction house that makes this MMO so different than the other ones is you could actually place orders, and Buyers, once you yeah. really, once you really get an understanding of how that works, um, we were able in, in our guild bank, we upgraded Architect 2, upgraded the, you know, got the guild bank, mm -hmm. our guild bank was full full of crafting materials, stacks and stacks, thousands of thousands of crafting materials for <laughs> that we, I probably myself spent maybe 50 silver for, and the entire guild bank was full. 
Um, and that was due to the fact that the order system, uh, players got to get into there and realize that you can actually place orders, meaning that if you don't want to pay that price, you can actually put a bid in mm -hmm. and say, I will buy this much of this, this amount for three copper. So I'll give you an example. And, I'll, and I'm saying this to help all the other players out there, okay? Because as much as I'd love to dominate the market, it's not so much fun. Um, and it's kind of breaking. Yeah, things. this is so a simple tip that everyone is, will is, learn eventually. Absolutely. So one thing that a lot of players do, random players, is when they look at their bags and they say, ooh, look at all of these things I can sell on the market, they're going to notice that a lot of items don't have any listings on the market. So what they normally do at that point, because they can't sell it on the market while they're running around questing, what would you do, Bridger? You'd vendor it, right? Yeah. You know, just yeah. little salvageable items and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, the the way we com we completely amassed everything we could is by putting those little salvageable items or the little items you would normally vendor and buying, setting a, a place order for one copper a piece on all the items that you would normally vendor. And then we would buy out all those items and then sell them to people for more money, usually five, six copper a piece. So there was never a time in our server or whatever uh, collaboration of servers that were part of our market where you would go to the market and not see somebody available. But you didn't think about it when you're selling that little metal scrap, you know, that you would normally either salvage or sell, that you're selling it to this guy for one copper a piece. So I, at one point, the, the metal scrap salvageable item and a couple other salvageable items, I had over 13K of them at one point. How did you and even so, that many stacks? Wow. Well, we had the guild bank, and my, we also ah. had my own bank. And, uh, and the reason being is because people were not, you know, they would either vendor them or go to there, and nobody was looking to buy them except me. So then I would break them down and get materials from them. It's just one of those things that everything in your bank, every, everything in your inventory, this is the tip. If it's not gray, keep it. Yes. You can you can send it to your bank. Otherwise, guys like me <laughs> will <laughs> get filthy rich off it. I don't want to see that happen again because as much as it's fun talking about it, it breaks the whole economy. I was sitting on towards the end there, all the guildies, everybody on my stream knew it. I was sitting on about three, four hundred gold there at the end when I was able to sell everything. And, what? you know, that right there, it, you shouldn't be able to do that. Nobody should have that much I money, even you know, reach one goal 36 one hours. Everything. Yeah, so, yeah, don't sell your things to vendors. Don't sell them randomly to people on the market just because you need to get rid of backspace. You have a bank. You have that little right-click function, which everybody didn't know about, apparently. And clear out your space that way. Just, if it's white, keep it. There you I, go. I have a new task for the chat room. You now have a new meme to create for this week. I want Freelancer's head on Scrooge McDuck about to dive into his pile of gold. <laughs> Let's do that. I want to see that coming up in the, in the chat room here. All right. So uh, I, that's, that's, a, that's obviously exactly what you want to do. And I'm actually going to create on the next beta test, I'm going to create a how-to Guild Wars 2 video specifically about exactly what freelance is talking about i'm going to walk everybody through and show listen this is how the system works this is how you should at least get some money for your items you shouldn't vendor this stuff you shouldn't just sell it to the person who's willing to pay the most put out some buy orders etc and uh and and that way at least at the very least our listeners will have a bit more understanding of how the market works and it won't be quite so bad but to be fair, people do learn that stuff eventually. This is the first weekend with a new system that a lot of people are unfamiliar with. So I'm guessing by the time that the game is a couple months old that a lot of people will understand how they should be doing things. They'll, their friends will tell them, oh, why are you vendoring that stuff? You should be selling it this way, blah, blah, blah. So hopefully that will propagate and, uh, and, and Freelancer can get only semi-rich instead of super rich. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, in the future. Glim, also... Glim in chat there brought up an example right there is what I was talking about. Die seeds. How many people had die seeds and you didn't really care yeah, to I had dice, like right? Oh, man. Ten. Guess who ten was the them. only one requesting on the market to buy die seeds at one copper a piece? So when you went to the market and you went to look at all your items you're selling, you know, obviously your salvageable stuff sold easily. Everybody's buying that. But when you got to your little mundane stuff like die seeds and, you know, metal scraps and these little gems that you had no use for, nobody was selling them except this one little guy there, you know, or nobody was buying them from you except that one guy at one copper piece. <laughs> so, you know, keep everything is, is the thing. The lesson I, I, I think I'm, I, I know personally for me, um, because it was the beta and I really wasn't interested in doing the crafting or the any sort of economy. I was just selling crap just to get my inventory empty. That was me just, too. I didn't care yeah, about just, what I had. I, normally, normally I would have kept all that stuff, but you know, I'd always sell the stuff that you know was the gray. 
but this time I was just like, screw it, just sell it. I need to get stuff in my inventory. Thank so you to, I'm wondering. Thank you to Maximus for this image. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Maximus. That was, quick. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, Maximus. I hate you all. <laughs> lupus. <laughs> Maximus Lupus. Microsoft Paint. Good job. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Vega. Go ahead. Oh, no. I was done. I was just saying, I was just selling stuff just because it was a beta and it really didn't care yeah, much. Yeah, same. I just wanted the, like, the money up front just to like, teleport around and stuff. That was all I needed. Yeah, and, and for people who don't know, the die seeds are super important. They're going to be very valuable when the game actually comes out because if you go to the die manufacturer in your home instance, in your, in your capital city, you can give him the die seed, and I think it just randomly generates uh, a, 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 then a color for you the next day, and you will then be able to either lock that that dot colored die into your account or if you already have it or if you just don't want it you can sell it on the auction house and there are going to be some colors that are a lot more rare that people will pay a lot of gold for so i'm pretty sure all dice is there more than one kind of die seed do you know or is it just all, no, that one die just seed can be anything dice seed. yep you okay. just get dice seed. and what do you think about the way the gems worked you know we had a lot of debate about that mm -hmm. do you think I they really liked the game? it i don't think they did no, yeah. I really liked it. I mean, at the end of beta, because I was just kind of like wanted to test it out, I spent like pretty much all my silver on buying gems. It it actually works really well. Like you get the gems instantly and then you can buy it. And I think it worked out on our server that obviously it is beta and not many people apart from freelancer have money. So it was something, <laughs> it was something like 10 silver for 100 gems, which mm -hmm. was like awesome. Like 10 silver is not hard to get at all. And I could buy like loads of stuff. with. Like, that was because silver. the market was flooded with gems though, because everybody got yeah. 2,000 for free. When, uh, when TL first started um, selling their gems for money, they were getting like 3.5 gold. Um, which was a lie. And then like towards Sunday when people were just realizing they could, you know, get gems for free, uh, they were only getting like one gold and some of them not even getting that. So it's the way the system was fluctuating was really, really neat to see. Uh, it definitely works. And it, uh, it's slightly different from what I expected. They talked about how you were going to sell directly to other players, but it seems yeah, like ArenaNet is a central transfer bank in the middle of that. It's more like they fluctuate the exchange rate based upon how many gems are being sold and, and bought. And so you don't sell directly to a player, you talk to an exchange bank, and the exchange bank handles all of the, it's sort of a third party I that handles that's everything. Good, yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of like, uh, like Spiral Knights is sort of similar to that. I don't know if anyone you know, Now, now you know this, chat, this, like, is a, this is a gold gems. sink too. Because just to test it out, I wanted to make sure that it worked this way. I had like 900 gems or so that I sold for cash for, for, for gold, and then I went to buy them back with all the with the same exact amount of gem uh, of uh, of gold, and it would not get me the same amount. It only gave me like six hundred or seven hundred and something gems. So clearly, there's a sort of exchange rate tax that's put on there yeah. whenever you do make those transactions, which kind of makes sense. It's a gold sink. That's part of the way that it works. Yeah. So that was very interesting. Uh, any other thoughts on the auction house, the bank, the economy system? What about uh, you know? The, the fact that there's no player-to-player -player trading. A lot of people have been talking about that. Did you feel the hurt on that? Yeah, it was really annoying because I was like one of the few people on my server that actually did like Asclonian catacombs. And even though ArenaNet said that you'll only get gear that you can use, it wasn't true in this beta. I don't know if they're going to change it, but the whole dungeon, apart from the final boss, I basically got all male gear as an elementalist. So I was like trading it to like, you know, the other people in my party, like, do you want this, do you want that? And I was giving it to them. It was so annoying to actually just like, get open the mail, type in their name, send it. They have to wait for it to come. Because of the server lag, it wasn't instant. So it was quite stressful. And it was just like, I could just right click and trade and send it to them right away. And I think someone pointed out on my YouTube channel, cause I made a video about it. And um, they actually said that if you're actually selling something to someone and you're not using a trading house, say for example, someone in your guild is buying it off you, they could screw you over if they're a horrible person and just not send you back the money if it's like an actual mail. Oh, cause they don't have a COD system. There's no cash on yeah. delivery system yeah. like there is in WoW. That is a problem. Uh, I, I definitely would love to see a trading window or at the very least, I mean, the other thing that we had was um, somebody like said, oh, I mailed that to you. And they're like, no, I don't have it. Like, well, I sent it. It said, I think I sent it. Maybe it's here. What happened? And there was like oh. server lag or something that took a while for yeah. it to get to you. Well, like with uh, with my own guild members, we, you know, we jumped off in World v. World and we needed to buy like catapults and trebuchets and stuff right off the bat. So we... I immediately found out we didn't have a trading system, but the mail system I don't think was that broken. I, I kind of disagree. It, it was it worked fine. It, it got overloaded to a point. So yeah. like when I was receiving all this mail from all these TL members and the other guys in the team speak uh, to buy out our trebuchets and stuff immediately, 
it, it would send like nine pieces and but 30 people sent me mail so i'd have to clear out those nine pieces of mail then give it like a minute and then all of a sudden it would pop up with 10 more you know it just mm. it took a little bit of time but i don't think it was that broken because when we got to the point like uh, like i started as a mesmer i really wanted my great sword you know my my great sword staff combo that's me so immediately i asked uh does anybody have a great sword like 30 minutes into world be world Five people had it. They just instantly mailed it to me. They had extra ones, and it wasn't that hard. I don't think that's a broken system. Um, it the, would just be nice to like be. But it's able not to as good as a normal trade window. Yeah. It's not broken. It's just I the trade window. I convenient. think it's better because if I'm if I'm check if I type out Guild Chat, does anybody have a great sword? And they're in Lion's Arch, and I'm halfway at Dreaming Bay. You know, they could just mail it instantly, and yeah, I could I pick agree. up my mail anywhere in the world. So the mail is good, you know. like, but not as a standalone feature. I think it is very good that you can access your mail anywhere, and you know, it is instant when the servers are fine. But as a standalone feature, I think you need to have a shade window as well. I just think, you know, as you said, if you're anywhere, you can access it, but just for someone to be able to stand next to you and trade would be a lot better for different situations. Now, as I wonder if the reason they didn't put a trade window in is they want people to use the, the trading post. They want you to sell your things there. They don't want you to jump into the into Lion's Arch and stand there screaming in local chat, want to sell, blah, 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 we'll pay whatever. Because if there is no trading system like that, then nobody's going to do that. They'll actually go and use the trading system and make sure the market is fluctuating and accurately representing what's going on. Because remember, this is a global market. Every single server is in the same market. So if... It turns out that because the marketplace takes a price, like a 3% overhead or whatever it is out of people that put up there, people are going to be like, well, I can make more money by standing in Lion's Arch because our server needs this specific thing or whatever, has more of it, whatever. Maybe that's something they're trying to avoid by forcing you to use the marketplace to make your transactions with people you don't know. Now, what we're talking about here is specifically making transactions with people you do know. For that, the mail is pretty useful. What about Kai's situation where it's like, it's somebody in my guild you know, Kai's a guild leader, but what if, you know, you're just a Joe Schmo and there's another Joe Schmo and he says, yeah, I'll send you this thing. And they don't send you the thing and they say it was a miscommunication or some other. There just could be so much drama that comes out of that without mm -hmm. a, a dedicated trade window or without some kind of a cash on delivery system to have uh, basically ensure that when I send you this thing, you'll send me that thing. The well, mail. they can fix it. I mean, if they don't want people to, as you said, as a suggestion, it could be that they don't want people to actually buy things on there. They could make it that you can't trade currency via a trade window and you actually have to do it via the trading post. You could just trade items via that and, you know, that would fix it. I would happily just be able to trade items. I'm, I'm looking at it like this. I will not have random people walking up requesting the trade and I'm happy. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and to me, the mail system, I, you know, we had at least... 200, maybe uh, 150 people in TeamSpeak and, and then our own guild. And of all the people sending mail back and forth and trading, everybody got equipped. It, the communication was great. It, the mail system worked. I mean, so I don't really have any complaints about it. All right. Awesome. Let's move on to the next bit here. I wanted to talk about UI, the user interface. How did you guys find the user interface? We talked about the chat system a little bit. Let's talk about the mini map, the map, the, the, bo the whole bottom bar there, and all the panels and windows, like the hero panel and all that stuff. Does anybody have any gripes with any of that? Did you not like any I, specific thing? I have a gripe thing? with the treats. The treats um, window? Unless there was a way to do it, and I'm just really stupid, which is very much the case. Um, when you were in PvP and I wanted to respec, you know, they have the option to refund all your points. Mm -hmm. If I started putting stuff into a tree, how do I get it out of there if I don't want to put it in? There like, let's be a say plus I want a minus button, is what you're saying. A yeah, plus all I saw was the plus button. button. So I'd, I'd, I'd put something in there, but like, oh, I don't want to do it. I got to refund all the you points. Like, it's just a little it, yeah. thing like that. And then the other thing was um, if I want to be able to mouse over the major traits, um, not the major traits, the. What are they called? There's the minor and the major in each yeah. for, for levels. I want to be able to mouse over that and see what I, my options are without having to put points into it. Oh, um, I, I see what you're saying. See the major traits without actually putting all those points in. Yeah, I agree because the only, way, only on way you could do it is to put in you know, your 10 points and then see it and then realize, right, I don't want to do this. Or, you know, it just makes it easier mm -hmm. if you're playing around with the traits to kind of make builds really quick and kind of see where things line up. The other problem I had with the trait window was... If I've got 70 traits and I'm in the mist making my PvP build, 
I have to click 70 times to put all those things in there. Like, I can't just click at the end of the air tree and have it automatically put 30 points in. I have to go click, 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 click. And then if after that I decide, okay, I want to change it, no, I no, that match was good, but I didn't like being in the air. I would rather be in the earth. Refund all points. Click, 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 click. That's a big pain. So maybe they'll put some optimization there. I mean, who was it? Ragswolf just said use a build calculator. Yeah, I could use a build calculator, but I don't want to have alt tab yet. out of the game. I don't want to <laughs> alt tab out of a game just to use a build calculator for something that's in the game. That should be there. Agreed. All right, uh, Kai, you had something to say? Yeah, one thing that I kind of had a little gripe with, I didn't realize I had a gripe with until someone in my guild mentioned it, but on the <laughs> world map, when you're looking for like a repair merchant or a trading post, sometimes the little icons, they actually like overlap on top of each other and you can't see like the repair merchant because like there's a trading post on top of it or like, next to it. Oh, and, on um, the map, yeah. Yeah, so I would like to have a feature where you can actually filter the map, like just the world map to say, I only want to show repair merchants, just so that you can see where they are, just for easy, like, repairing. Or just have them slightly more separated on the map itself. Just change the image itself yeah. to make them slightly separate. Or, and the other thing that I was thinking is if you mouse over it, instead of having, like, three different individual points that that you could once you zoom out enough it becomes a single point and lists all the guys there all the merchants yeah, that are right that next to each other i've seen other games do that kind of a thing i would like to see that in the interface as well um yeah. yep. freelancer any any comments on the user interface at all yeah i had a big gripe it, since we got out into world v world one thing that um, with i mean with the guild i can say who has supply you know and who doesn't mm. have supply but i wish there was like a little icon or Maybe just something that, near your name or whatever, you know, um, that shows I have 10 supply on me. So that when the raid leaders are running around, they can make that call just looking at the general people around them to say, I have enough supply for a trebuchet or I have enough supply for a, a ram. Uh, it was quite annoying uh, to, you know, have to ask or, or to guess if, I, if half of my guys have supply. Uh, it's just something minor. I think they just make a little icon, you know, next to the name or near somewhere. Just a little crate or something. Yeah, that, that, that shows, shows they have supply. That way you as a raid leader, if you have people that are not in your guild running around with you, which we did 24-7, I know they have 10 supply. I know if I look at five of them, I can place that ram down, you know, and theoretically I have the supply. Or we all can relate to this. If I do place that ram down in, among my guild, I can check and see, you know, we need that two more people to put supply on that ramp, right? I don't have to ask who has supply. Somebody go up there who has supply. I could just look and say, hey, uh, Bridger, run up there and, you know, put your supply on that ramp. And it's just it's just little tweaks like that I'd like to see in the game. Yeah. One other thing I had was um, in the beta, I don't know if you, I don't know how big your guys' guild is, but um, there was a hundred member limit mm -hmm. on guilds in we beta. Had a and with I. That. I had to make two guilds, and it kind of ruined the whole communication, like of Guild Wars Two, and having to be able to play with everyone because my guild was split in two, and you know people couldn't play with the people they wanted to play with because it was hard to contact them and stuff like that. So I thought that was, I hope they change that because that's gonna like screw yeah, me we over we ran into that issue also. We uh, we combined, we tried to get everybody into one guild, the community guys. So, and you know we have 150 people on Teamspeak all asking to join a guild. When we hit that 100 mark right immediately it was like wait what's going on because if you remember bridger we talked about uh mm -hmm. 10 or so episodes ago that their guild cap was supposedly supposed to be either really high or unlimited or whatever because you could join yeah. multiple guilds so what's the point um i'm thinking that's a beta thing because if you remember in wow uh and also um aeon as well during the betas there, I specifically remember them capping at those at 100 as well. So I'm thinking that that was just sort of a beta thing. Um, I hope so. Because yeah. I have like over 300 members. That means I have like three guilds. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Time for my biggest gripe, I think, in the entire game. And it has uh -oh. to do with the UI. And that's with the tooltips not having enough information. I, I hover over uh, uh, like a damaging spell or something like that, and it says 33 damage, you know, whatever, at the low level. Okay, 
it does 33 damage. What happens when you factor in my power? Now how much is it doing? What happens when it crits? How much is it doing then? What happens with the bleeding damage? Is that bleeding total or is that each tick? It says nine seconds. What does that mean? It says five stacks. Does that mean that's actually done five times? There's no good information on that. I kind of had to experiment to figure it out. But more importantly, when you hover over the buffs that are on your character, it kind of just says you have swiftness. It doesn't tell you how long it is. It doesn't tell you when it's going to run out. It kind of tells you, oh, and you're poisoned or you're this. And the big problem that I had is I had I was trying to stack a bunch of passive speed modifiers on my elementalist because I wanted to make him really mobile. So I had one major trait that gave me plus 15% if I was wearing a dagger. I had a minor trait that gave me plus 10% when I was in air. And I had another one that major trait that uh, or signet that would give me plus 10% all the time. And I was trying to find out, okay, are these working? Are they not? Because there's these are small numbers. I can't really tell. So I had to run a bunch of tests and it feels like it's capped at about 20% or 25%. I couldn't really tell because I tried to, to do the numbers, but I, I, I had to run a specific distance and try to time it with a stupid timer on my iPhone, which sucks. But anyway, um, I, it felt like there was a cap because I had all three of those things on and I, and I crossed the same distance in the same time. It was like 15 yes. seconds uh, as if I only had one of the things on. So it seems like those Even don't if stack. It's capped, it's capped at, I think it's either 25% or 33%, but speed boost is capped. It's the, uh, so that kind of information, I would love to see that passive speed boost is one of the things, so I know it's there. It's There's not enough feedback as to what things are actively affecting your character and to what degree. I would really love to see on every tooltip that has to do with a weapon or an ability, you know, how much extra damage am I getting from power? When it says, plus, you know, this, this thing give, makes your condition damage, you know, 30% more. Well, that should be reflected on each of my conditions tooltips so that I know exactly what's going on. I would love to see, I, I just want to dive in and really know more about what all my, what all my tools do without having to experiment for three hours and, and fighting those stupid golems in the world versus world, or the, the mists. Uh, but that was my biggest biggest gripe. Otherwise, I really liked the UI. It's clean. All of the the the, the panels felt really responsive. The mini map and the map were amazing. And the only thing I would change there is I want to be able to ping and draw on the world map and not just on the mini map. I would love if to be able to do that. If you ping on the mini map, it does show on the world. It map. does show on the world map to the other people in your party. Yeah, yeah I just would love to be able to not have Go to the ping other way. on the mini map. Yeah. Okay, I got yeah. to try the the commander function. You know, the squad uh, leader thing. Yeah. Yeah, so How does that work? Um, well, we we got the actually we had three gold a couple hours into the game, but we didn't. I wasn't level eleven yet, so you had to be level eleven. I figured that out the hard way. So <laughs> I power power leveled up to level eleven. Did a little PVE. Oh my god! Oh. And uh, <laughs> the shade. And so you get this little fancy icon that appears above you. Now you as a squad leader, I never saw that icon, so I don't know what it looks like. But apparently, when I activated it, everybody else saw me anywhere on the map. Now, yeah. as a squad leader, I could uh, control. Uh, I believe it was either all or shift or one of them. I, there was a modifier key where I could click on the map. And anybody in my squad could see these little waypoint icons, which is really neat. Didn't really use it because, you know, we were in a team speak and I didn't need to talk to bugs yeah. really. But um, the feature was there. Now, it was interesting. Um, we put in bug reports because every time I teleported, if I went to a waypoint within the map or if I switched to another uh, point in the map, my icon disappeared. Even though it said my uh, squad, you know, squad leader was still activated, my icon and everything would disappear and the guildies would be like, your icon disappeared. And, so hopefully they fix that. But uh, one thing I really notice is it's like a uh, it's like a bright light to mosquitoes. Uh, the way it works, <laughs> you know. We were, talk we were we were talking two episodes ago about you know uh, how that works or whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. I I completely take back what I said back then because one thing we were able to do is the random people that entered the zone uh, instead of asking, "Hey, where's everybody at?" Whenever I turn that little yellow light on, you know. Immediately, we found our raids and stuff. We found support, and we were able to break off into different groups, and it really, really worked. It really helped. Now, I was the only one with it, and it seemed like an entire server. None of us saw another guy with it. What will happen when there are five people in a zone with it? You know, that's the big question. But in terms of one guy using it, myself using it, it worked really, really well. So it helped the server, you know, really. Go ahead. So everyone can see it, not just the people in your squad. Correct. Everybody can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, even even the guys in the team speak that weren't in the guild, they didn't have to ask. They just pressed M when they entered the zone that we were all in, and they immediately saw the icon, and it worked can, really well. Can you hover over it? Can they see your name or? 
Uh, well, I don't, I don't think, think so. Because that would be, yeah. as you said, if there's like, if you don't see it when you're, you just see yeah, everyone sees it. if there's 10 commanders, it, yeah. how do you know which one is Am I going to just like have to waypoint around to find well, my Well, no, that's right. They, what they clarified was if you join a commander, if you join a, a squad commander, you can't see any of the other squad leaders anymore. You only oh, see right, your own okay. squad leader. So you well, only fine. see every squad leader if you are not in a squad. Now, the thing that I would like is, let me ask you guys, would it be good or bad if once you joined that squad, the name of everyone else in that squad would then change to a different color, like fuchsia or something like that? Or would you still yeah. like them broken down by guild party and other? Would that um, be good or bad? I think, I think having the color, I think having the color code is good because even when just having um, all the guys in the guild show up as gold, because, you know, I was running around, I wasn't part of the guild yet, and everyone was just green or whatever. And then as soon as I came in the guild, I say, oh, there's all the guild people. I yeah. see them moving this way, and it makes it a lot easier. So I think if you added that functionality for when you're in the squad, you know who's in your squad, it makes it easier to follow that one color as opposed to just trying to follow the yeah, one icon. Yeah, because the squad icon. could be over more than one guild. You could have an alliance, so that means your squad is, like, the team legacy and somebody else. So it would be cool to actually change it. But that brings me to, like, a point. Did you guys find it annoying that the um, that everyone and the party was, like, too close of a color? Did you guys think that? A lot of people, oh, like, complained. the party being sort of a light blue and, the, and everyone yeah. else being sort of a, a greenish blue yeah, color? Yeah, it was too close. I think that it should be, like, different colors. I didn't see too much issue with that. The only annoyance I had with the, the icon and the, the guild members and all that was I had no idea that I could go into PvE with it. Like, I started doing, like, uh, when we went to do the, the end event, okay? Yeah. Or we're going to talk about that later. I guess we can talk about <laughs> it now, right? So the end event, uh, whoever wasn't there, it was it was okay, I guess. But, you know, it was fun. It had a lot of GW1 references and references from other games, which was really neat. Um, but I, I had my icon on, and I, did, I was just seeing if it would work. And all of a sudden, as we're killing these MOAs, I, I'm getting hordes of people following me. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I like that. I, I really don't. But, um, you know, because anybody, I guess, could use it. And, then again, it comes to that question. If everybody's using that icon, then you don't have any focus anymore. But... Uh, that completely blew me away. The guild thing, Kai, did you just have like an issue where it was like your guild members were all, you know, mixed in with the other players following you guys and you couldn't really tell a difference or? Well, because guild's orange, that was fine. So I could see like the orange, but then obviously I had two guilds. So the other guild members were like a light blue color. And then my party members were actually blue. So it was like, because I ran around with like 40 people. I mean, we were in Keswick Sales now, it was like 40 of us. There was like four different parties all running around together. So there was like the light blue color which was my actual party orange which was like guild members who weren't in my party and then there was like the people in the other guild who weren't in my party who were like just an, like a greeny blue color and it was just like it was just too confusing i'd rather it be like you know set actual like different colors like maybe like you know something perhaps that's more if they had out. something where you could just change the colors there you go yeah so that'd be cool yeah yeah, yeah. All right, so did we cover everything that has to do with interface UI stuff? Uh, I wanted to talk about teaching, uh, you know, how did the tutorials and stuff go. We'll get to that later. Uh, I think it's time to move on. Does that sound okay to everybody? <laughs> to the next? Of, yeah. Okay, the first of four sections of the roundtable is now complete, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long show. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give our, uh, our host here a chance to get up and stretch and get a drink. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, about five minutes here, we're going to come back with some other hosts. We're going to talk about PVE, our thoughts about Yay. the personal story, Freelance's crafting, favorite. dynamic cards. Freelancers leaving. I'm kicking them out of the show for this section so Bye, you can stop scowling at us from the side. <laughs> Casuals. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just. Oh, there you had to go and say that the word. Low, that was a low blow, Kai. There you had to go and <laughs> say low the low. word. All right, we'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. Stay tuned. It skipped again. Come on. Seriously? It's not a CD player, it's an MP3. Why is it skipping? Has to load the MP. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually take a break now. <laughs> okay.
Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. We're now going to go over to the PvE, player versus environment section of the discussion. And replacing Freelancer for this piece is Mr. Edwin from Team Legacy. Welcome, sir. Hey, brother. So, Edwin Schapp, I'm sorry, is the, is, that's, the, uh, that's the name you go by on the, on the interwebs, on the gurus, is where people may know you as. Yes. All right, so... Let us take a look then, as I turn off the background music because we do not no longer need the chart theme. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to PvE. So how did you guys feel? Let's start with the, the heart slash dynamic event system. The renowned heart sort of pulling you to an area and then the, the dynamic events actually having you do things that are very interesting and, and sort of changeable. Uh, uh, Vega, what did you think about that? How, the, how did those two systems interact for you? Um... I love the heart system because um, to me it, 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 it gives the PvE a flow unlike any other MMO I've ever played. Um, normally you have to go to the town, grab a bunch of quests, go out, do the quests, come back to the town, hand in the quests. At least with the heart system it's just you go from one to the next and it just it flows. You don't have to interrupt your journey and story just to go back to town. And even, I mean, even in Guild Wars 2, if you did, you know, they had the whole teleporting system, so it's not a big deal. But I just like how the hearts make the game flow very well. Edwin, did you find the hearts to be a little tedious? I mean, were they all samey? Did, 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 they, did you get pulled into and engaged with what was going on at the hearts? Or were they just kind of a, a thing that you did because you wanted to fill them up? There were some that I found were really fun to play, and there were some that I found that were, you know, collect... Uh, a box of goods and run it back to the vendor, which was the bad ones I didn't even do. But I found that some of them were meant to be played under dynamic events, which would uh, increase the heart a lot to completion. But many of the events weren't running nearly commonly enough uh, often to actually get to that point. So you're just grinding out, uh, you know, Corsairs or Separatists, whatever they were, um, for you know 20 minutes to get a couple hundred experience, and it didn't feel fulfilling at that point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, I really did like uh, some of the hearts, especially. I mean, it kind of was dependent upon on the, each of the different systems there. I, I really did like the, the fact that you could talk to the heart guy and get a much better idea of what was going on. But specifically, the scouts gave you a really good idea of what was going on in the overall world. It gave you the generalized, here's what's happening in this region, and that's why these people need your help. I liked that section. It sort of gave context to everything that you were doing. Yeah. Okay. The the one heart quest that I absolutely hated was the stupid rabbits with <laughs> getting the food. Yeah. Oh my god. That's oh, broke. that's right that on the top just, of the Norn Mountain. That's yes. Oh, uh, so annoying. That is just broken. It's got to be broken because because you it says so that you're bad. supposed to scare the rabbits away, but when you do, you drop the food and it disappears. What the <laughs> hell was up with that? <laughs> and the stupid rabbit's tripping you. It's, you know, it, you're it like jumped this, on your chest and knocked Norn. you over. <laughs> you're this big Norn guy, like, huge hulking guy and a little bunny rabbit. It's like, beep, and you, and you get knocked over, you know? They really that want was... that food. I don't think you understand. Yeah. Well, it was a precursor to the legendary uh, bunny rabbit at the end of the game. I guess there is, exactly. It was <laughs> right up in the same area, too, on top of that mountain. Uh, uh, so there, there do seem to be, like, the heart systems. Some of the most unique and interesting things that they have you do in the game are based around the hearts because they want you to, to go for that 100% completion, and that will guarantee you see the most interesting style events. I mean, we saw the Yogscast video from the last beta where it turns you into a pig. <laughs> and then you have to go around yeah. and find truffles or something for this Hylic. And it doesn't even give you the option. Like, you click on the thing, and you're like, wait a minute, what do you... And then, boom, he just turns you into a pig. You don't even... <laughs> you can't say anything. Yeah, I <laughs> so I like that they made the very unique and funny kind of goofy quests into the hearts so that you're sort of guaranteed to find and play them, quote-unquote. I mean, it's not like they're not there sometimes. And then, I mean, the one where you, where you turn into a snow leopard and you play with the cubs... To, to sort of make them happy, but then of course you turn back into a human and you never come back again, and that makes them sad and depressed for the rest of their life. Because that cool that cool snow leopard that liked them when they were little is gone now and never came back. He must not have liked them after all. So there was, there was I really liked was, um. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jared. There was there was a there was one that was just completely amazing for me. It was a uh, there were a bunch of separatists that had trebuchets, and there was an event to destroy the trebuchets. Once you destroy them. 
um, you can go into this town and the uh, little heart guy was there and he was like, yeah, kill more separatists. And I, and I wasn't happy about it, but I was with a couple of guys who were talking about it. And then I realized on this little hill there were sniper rifles, which you could get onto to actually oh, shoot yeah. them for like all their health, which was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I love the right, quest yeah. that had you pick things up and then do stuff with it, like special special items that gave you new buttons to press. Like those were really cool. Yeah, um, one event I really liked where the, the I only ran across one where it was, um, you know, um, a certain castle or keep got taken over by a certain group and you had to go and take that back in order to kind of gain the NPCs from that castle in order to kind of move on. In the human lands? Um, no, this is in the Norn. Oh, okay. um, I forget I forget exactly what it was, but it, it you know, it was just seeing that whole world changing around you. That was really cool. Yeah, in regards to like the world changing around you, I don't know if it's the same one, but there was an event in the Norn 15 to 25 area where you finished a heart. Once you'd finished a heart, you had like an escort quest for a woman where she had to go like rescue sacred owls. And then once you'd finished that, it then linked to another event where you had to attack a big like dragon pillar. Once you had done that, the building behind you set on fire um, and got completely destroyed so that you could run into it and get a skill point. So you actually couldn't get that skill point unless you did this massive chain. Oh. Of events, so that was really, really cool. Like that was cool to see that like unfold. The actual world get destroyed, and then people around you could get the skill point. And yeah, you know, if you didn't do that whole event, you wouldn't be able to get it because it'd just be like a building you wouldn't be able to get into. So that was really cool. But um, what I was going to say earlier on um, Edwin's point is that you really are reliant on those events happening. There literally are some hearts where it is so grindy and tedious if the event isn't happening. But if the event is there, you finish the heart and the event within like five minutes. If yeah. it's not there, it could take about half an hour to finish it. Yeah, I had a couple of those happen, but they, they seem few and far between, but that, that's sort of yeah, a tuning thing. The, the systems as a whole seem to work really well when they did yeah, get them like right. And, yeah. and, and I like that a lot. Uh, so, now, here's an interesting photo that I will blow up here onto the screen. It's also in the show notes there. Uh, somebody made this picture of what boss combat looked like in PvE. You got the boss, and then you've got a whole bunch of dead players in this zone. You can't see anything in this zone because it's filled with particle effects. And then outside of this zone, you have all the ranged players that are just hunky-dory. This guy's eating a pizza, this guy went to res his mate with no trouble, and they're just downing the boss, while this guy in the center here is Chuck Norris for some reason. But uh, there, there was a big discussion about in PvE how, well, why the hell would I ever play a melee character? I'll let all the other chumps go in there because I, it's so much easier for me if I just sit back here and take care of this. Did you guys have this sort of effect when you were playing the PvE stuff, Kai? Well, I was um, ranged. I, I did play double daggers, but I never did double daggers in like a big event. But I did get an email from someone who actually said that they basically were never going to play melee anymore because the particle effects were too high that they couldn't see what was on the ground. They didn't know when to dodge or anything, that they were just dead the whole time because it was just horrible as a melee character to not know what's going on. But as a ranged, I was like, the particle effects are fine. Like, what are you on about? I, I, and he's like, yeah, but you're ranged. So, you know, it's not a problem, but... Do you think that was due to the, the scaling? I mean, there was so many people at a lot of these dynamic events. They felt best when there was like five to 10 people at them. Yeah. When you got above 15 or 20, it felt like the scaling kind of broke and they just tried to spawn as many things as possible. And so AOEs became the best thing to do ever <laughs> at ranged. Well I yeah. think one of you guys mentioned it on a previous show. I can't remember who, but I think it'd be good to have like a toggle feature where you could actually only show AOEs that affected you, whether it be like a heal or something that is going to damage you. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a Mesmer, why do you care that there's an AOE firestorm going on that is attacking a mob? Like, it shouldn't be irrelevant to you. And um, I think it should only show things that are healing you or damaging you, then I think that'd be cool. If they, if they did that by default or something, the, there would be so yeah. many people in the game going, Noob Elementalist, why aren't you doing anything? God, just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, we just like, Woo! Doing all the hard work. <laughs> they don't realize that they're not seeing it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds like something that could work or maybe just something that just toned down everything. Um, and actually, Oku brings up a good point. You need to see those because those are combo fields, right? That's, that's if you want to do yeah. cross fashion yeah, combos. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, and did it, that do anything for you in PvE? <laughs> I never got it. I never even I, paid attention. I love seeing the little combo thing because I, I was using the flamethrower all the time. So I throw down uh, the little like firewall and you see like combo, 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 combo. Yeah, I saw cool. that a few times, yeah, but I never cool. did it on purpose. 
I found a really um, cool combo actually that was um you know the um elementalist fire ring if you put that down and a guardian leaps through it they then get like this fire shield that burns foes it looks really cool as well oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what that was it's most important to, to to see, you know, to look badass when you're killing PvE mobs that yeah. can't appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. What else about uh, dynamic events? Uh, did So we talked a little bit about the scaling. Did you guys, uh, what was the most fun point that you had? Because I felt it was about 10. Was Jared, did you feel it was like uh, 10? Was it 2? Did you have fun playing with just 1, just by yourself? I mean, there were definitely events that they seemed overpowered, like the mobs seemed overpowered regardless of how many people there were, but I think probably below 15, there's not so many particle effects that you can't see what's going on, because I was playing either, uh, I was playing a ranger, so I was either sword and uh, warhorn, or I was great sword, so I was in their face the entire time. Like, I could leap out for a second, but, you know, I heal and I jump back in, and then I was, you know, totally invisible again. But I was able to survive most of the fights. Um using a lot of really powerful ranger elites because I managed to hit 30 by Saturday. Oh, well, there you go, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it was, did, did, did you guys know, was there a guy that would level you up to 30, like in the press beta, or did you have to do it your, all yourself? I had to do yeah. it all ourselves. There wasn't a guy. Ah, okay. I, told them, uh, I, told them I, went, to, um, I went to the dungeon at level 28. Because I would just couldn't be bothered to level to 30 <laughs> anymore with no zone. <laughs> Yo, yeah, because they only got to the 25 zone. <laughs> All yeah. Right. Any any other thoughts on the dynamic events? Did you guys have one dynamic event that really stood out in your mind as this was like the most awesome one that I that I participated in? I do. Um, um, go ahead, Edwin. I had one. Uh, it was me, Gaver, Eye Drops, and Meteorologist, and we're you know we're running around uh, one of the fifteen to twenty five zones. We don't have much to do, and we're trying to pull some hearts. And I see this little town. I'm like, oh, it's a char town. We can go you know resupply or whatever. But there was an event going on. So we walk in, all the mobs are dead, and there's a champion level 18 giant. And we have no idea what to do. So oh, says, I know that. Yeah, it says stomps and shouts. Like, okay, you know, he'll, we have to you know, back away. He doesn't actually attack. All he does is he'll stomp, and everybody within, you know, firing range, except for a ranger longbow, which is just treated, dies. <laughs> so we're <laughs> like rolling constantly. We have no way to defeat this thing. And finally, I, say, uh, I actually went to the auction house and bought myself a longbow because I never had one. And I had no skills unlocked. I was just like auto firing on it for, you know, fifteen minutes, and it there finally was, like, died. Thirty char dead, like around him. Like it was a pretty busy yeah. waypoint. Like I was just going along, like resing char, and then they were getting like one shot. I think it took me about an hour to defeat that. <laughs> it took ages. <laughs> it was ridiculous. The one that stood out for me was actually the. Uh, it was a, it was one of the centaur ones, and it might have been unbalanced or something. But people on Teamspeak can attest because I was sitting there swearing the whole time. I was trying to beat it. It was like this: the center of a centaur camp had this circle that you needed to stand in, and you needed to have you know uh, players in there and no centaur. If there were no centaur in there and there were players, the line started to go up. As soon as the centaur walked in, the line stopped. It didn't go back, but it did stop at like twenty percent or yeah. wherever you were at. And mm -hmm. then, uh, if you got the centaurs out again, it would go up a little bit more. But more players kept coming in and aggroing the centaurs that were not anywhere near coming towards the circle. And so the centaurs came into the circle to fight. And it was so frustrating because I could not, we couldn't kill them. They would spawn so fast. The only way to do it was have everybody stand in the very center of the circle and only kill the centaurs with non AOE, non jumping, bouncing effects that would kill the things that were only in the circle next to us. And, we, and I, I spent probably the better part of two hours trying to beat that stupid event. And then the server went down and I got back on and I was like, I'm running there first thing before anybody else gets there and I'm doing it myself. And I got like 80% and then more people showed up and got me killed and it reset all the way to zero. I was like, <laughs> See, that's the thing, like some hearts, like some hearts you can complete within minutes. Some hearts, it takes you like half an hour to an hour to complete. And it really is dependent on whether there is an event going on as to how quickly you'll do it. So I think, I mean, you'll learn, like as a player in PvE, you will learn what events take longer, what ones take shorter, the more characters you roll. And I think definitely next time I level in like the human area, I will be like, I'm going to wait, for example, the spider orchard thing. I'm going to wait until the event is on because that finishes so quickly then. And I just think you'll get so much more XP. So I think to go to the hearts, you know that events don't kind of run around that area, but that's something you'll just learn as you play, I think. 
And mm. uh, I think everybody in the chat was like the the shadow behemoth down in the swamp. Every time I went, I, yeah. I went to PVE and it said the shadow lies dormant. I was like, aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never got to see it. It is cool. Yeah, it tells it you though. I think that's really cool that like you know for if it's the big go on. events. Yeah, the meta events yeah. is what those are. Yeah. Uh, they're they're sort of big chains of events. And there's a dog back there. Hi, dog. Uh, so now. Kai and 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 Jared, I, I don't know Vega. How far, how high did you get in your leveling? I only got to like fifteen. All right, that's about where I got because I was doing all kinds of other stuff too. But for Kai and Edwin, did did you guys feel that the events were more challenging or more interesting or just in general more complicated as you got into the secondary zone, like the fifteen to twenty five yeah. zone? Definitely, and they were. Um... There was a lot more champions about. I remember one specifically, there was a champion uh, centaur in the Norn level 15 to 25 area that literally took about 20 people to kill it. And, you know, we couldn't do it as five. So it definitely wasn't like a scaling issue. It was a fact that they, he was like tough as nails. And then like 20 people there, and it took us about 45 minutes to kill him. And it wasn't even like, um, you know, like a group event or anything like that. It was just like part of this heart. And, you know, I definitely felt that it was harder and it made you work as a team and i really had to like um guide people on mumble be like guys there's ads over there kill the ads to the left kill the ads to the right okay now attack me a champion and it it was very organized i really really liked it because that was something i was really worried about in guild wars 2 that it wouldn't be anything i needed to organize people um i just felt that everyone would just run around havoc and you know you know, do whatever they wanted but i liked it that it was organized we actually got to like work as a team and once we killed it it was like yes it's done so yeah it definitely got harder Vega, did you have any dynamic events that really stick out in your mind? Um, the one that I had a lot of fun with, it was in the Norn area. It wasn't the Ice Shaman guy. It was um, it was further north, and it was uh, it almost looked like a mini dragon. He, he wasn't very big, but he was had this the one... Dome, the dome something around? Yeah, yeah the, the dome thing. Um, but when mm -hmm. I was doing it, there was a nice group there. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small, but it was fun because, you know, he would do this charge skill that pretty much one-shotted you. And so... You know, you get all these people down, and then you see people running around actually, actually, you know, re resing people and helping and, like, kind of working together as a team. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it wasn't as Im impressive in terms of scale as the other ones, but it was just fun because you have, um, have, you have all those people working together to do something, and it worked out really well. All right, now, one thing I did notice is that a lot of people were talking about, and I think it may have been a problem specific to the human territories, is that some people said, I did all the renowned hearts, I participated in all of the dynamic events when they came around, but I was still not, you know, I, I still couldn't go into the next zone yet because I wasn't a high yeah. enough level. <laughs> that uh, was me. I, um... I had the impression that you would be able to level from one to 15 in one zone. And I felt that I had to go from, you know, I was like one to 12 from the human starting area. Then I had to go to the char starting area and do Did half you do of your that. personal story as well during yeah. all that? I did my personal story dead on the level that it was intended. Um, I did every event that I came across. I prioritized events before hearts because in my mindset, hearts are there forever. Events are going to be done and gone. Right, so I was exactly. like, okay, I see an event, I do it, and then I go back to the whatever heart I was doing. And I still was only like level 12. And I don't know if I just didn't kill enough mobs or, you know, I generally just kind of did the heart by, you know, feeding cows rather than attacking mobs or something like that. I'm not sure, but I was about level 12 when I finished the human area. Well, I did read uh, of some feedback in the Guild Wars 2 official forums, and there was an arena net person there that basically said, okay, if, if, if you did, you know, all the renowned hearts and all of the dynamic events when they came up and you were doing your personal story uh, and you're still way under level, that's a problem. And you should, you know, tell us about it. Tell us exactly what zone you were in and what level at which you felt you had that problem where you were under leveled. Because that's, they said that is not the, the way that it's supposed to be designed. They're just going to have to tweak uh -huh. some of the numbers to make sure that that works. So yeah. my understanding is that uh, fear should at least be allayed in the future. Uh, I mean, also they mentioned that the crafting was bugged. If you do crafting, it gives you crafting XP, but it's also supposed to give you actual leveling experience. And th and it mm. gave you the crafting XP, but it didn't give it didn't consistently give you the leveling experience. In addition, you'll notice you got uh, experience for gathering. Did you guys notice that? That was kind of cool. Nice little yeah, boost cool. there. I think it gave you about the equivalent of like four or five kills when you gathered from a single node. I like that. 
Um, One thing that I felt, um, I don't know what le like areas you guys leveled in, but in the human starting area, there was a point at about level four where I felt like, whoa, what do I do? Like, you know, the next heart is level six. Like, I'm level four, okay? And I'd done every single heart, and I was like, hey, there's a big gap now between this level and my next level You mean when you left the little, the little valley and went out into the Shamor yeah. very area? Yeah. I actually just went out there, even though I was under level. I was like, screw it. I want to go kill some centaurs. And I had a blast <laughs> with it because there was a bunch of other people. So I was sort of able to participate without uh, too big of a problem. And I, I, got, I got one more level, and that made it easy enough to really participate in the rest of it. But I could definitely see that being a problem. Uh, but, you know, they're going to tweak those numbers. I hope that gets fixed in the yeah. future. Um, so let's talk personal story. Uh, what did you guys do very quickly? Uh, Edwin, what did you do for a, uh, for a racial choice, and what were your sort of major story elements? Um, I need to be honest on this one. I did not pay attention to my story elements. Oh, um, okay. I, uh, you know, I was, I, you know, you were on Friday and I come on at 11 and you're like, Hey, by the way, it's open. So I just jumped in there with my ranger yeah. and this because <laughs> I knew the first thing I wanted to hit was world versus world, everything raw, nothing taken. Mm -hmm. And I probably got about 15 levels in half an hour or an hour. Um, it was amazing. And so I did not see my story, but I did some of the story, um, and it was interesting, but... So you did the story uh, after, and it leveled you down. Did you find that, that the challenge was not there, or that it took away from it, the fact that you were leveled down? I mean, the, your damage is definitely leveled down. Like, I was level 36 by Sunday, and I only, you know, I was doing, you know, 30 damage, 20 damage, whatever it was. Um, so you're doing your level 2 personal story part? <laughs> yeah. And so your damage is level down, but I had Rampages 1, I had all three uh, utilities, I had a couple extra skills. Um, so there were definitely a couple of things that were a little more powerful, but by the most part, your damage is, your damage output's mostly the same. Okay, so uh, Vega, what did you do for your personal story? What race and uh, what choices did you have? Um, I didn't do the Norn as far as I did the Char. Um, I forget how far I got the Char. Um, but I definitely very, liked... very vaguely, so there's not too much, you know, uh, spoilers for people that don't want it. Just sort of give us the vague idea of what was going on in the personal story and whether you liked it or not. Um, well, I, I liked what was going on. I, I liked the little, like, cutscene cinematics where, it just, you know, it shows you talking to the guy. And, and I like how they take... You know, when you went, when you do that little questionnaire, when you're making your character, if you're going to be a cocky guy or you're going to be a brutish guy, and it kind of takes that personality and transfers it over to a personal story. It's just, it, it gives it a little bit extra, and you kind of feel like you're more of a part of it than as opposed to other MMOs where it's, you know, there's no voice acting or anything, and you're just kind of reading the text and going through the motions, and you're kind of role playing in your own mind if you want to. Um, I think the personal stories are good to kind of drag you in and kind of make it a little bit more immersive, I guess you could say. Immersion. Um, uh, what did you think about the quality of the the char story? Was was it? What, did it engage you? Did you want to know what happened next? Yeah, um, I like the char one. I, I thought some of the, the 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 quests that you had to do were kind of fun because they're a little bit different. Um, you know, there was there was one where you're. I know kind there's of there's sort of a villain in the Char story. Did you feel like I hate that guy? I need to I need to I need to do the next part of the personal I, story so I can stick it to him. I wasn't I wasn't like that driven, but it, it definitely more was so. Would you more, say is more so or less so than other games? Yeah, definitely more so than other MMOs. I'll say, um, but yeah, definitely more so. Okay, uh, Kai, what did you what, what race did you do and 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 how, what was your experience? I did human, and I chose um, the one where you couldn't find your sister, or your like sister had died, or whatever that was. Um, I did like it, but I wasn't really paying too much attention to detail because I want to be a Silvari, so I was like, oh, I don't really care. You mm -hmm. know, I kind of understood what was going on, but I wasn't like, oh my god, I need to know everything about this story. I think that's what I'll be like with the Silvari. I want to know exactly what's going on, who's my enemy, who I'm trying to kill, who I'm trying to rescue, etc. It was good, and I really felt like the personal story is a driving force in your leveling because the amount of XP you get from completing a personal story quest is so much more than you get from completing at heart and it really does like push you forward in leveling if you make sure you do your personal story on the designated level when you're supposed to it really does like push those levels faster what i actually did maybe four steps of the human personal story with the sort of commoner starting 
And, and oh, right. I, found, I found out that apparently the, the first choice that you make, the commoner versus noble versus living on the streets, you know, background that you choose for your character, that's sort of the, that decides the arc of your first 15 levels. And like mm -hmm. the next part would descri describe the arc of your next 15 levels. So that's kind of a cool thing. I didn't realize that it was that customizable uh, to that degree. Cause everybody's talking about, you know, when you're a noble born guy, you have this friend that, you know, this this creepy friend that, that always steals everything or whatever it is, or, or, or he's a cool guy, whatever. And I didn't have that guy. I had a different person. I had a friend that was like the, 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 the daughter of a barkeep or something like that. And I had to protect her when some bad guys came in and, and demanded free beer or whatever it was. <laughs> so that, oh, no, yeah, that well, was I a very the, different um, story and I kind of appreciate how different they are. Yeah, it is really cool. And then obviously as you go along your personal story, you're going to get further and further away from like your original choices because obviously every time you do a, you know, a quest, it's something different. I mean, there was one in particular. Did you get any even... choices that really changed the story? I don't remember getting any choices myself. I had a choice. I, think I didn't go that far like, though. 17 where I had to choose who I was going to fight with against these two bad guys um, in front of the Seraph or something like that and they actually like then went and helped me with my other quests so oh, cool. I chose like Logan and then he like went and helped me so I, you know that was a choice that I actually noticed actually changed the story spoiler there's a guy named Logan in the game sorry <laughs> didn't mean to spoil that for you <laughs> uh, so that's pretty cool. I didn't get that high. I, I, I did go a little bit further in the char story because my wife was playing a char and I really like how you can just sort of join them in their personal story. That was really cool. And I'm guessing when the game comes out, what we'll probably do is take turns going through each other's personal story because I want to see everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah.